world of sports, eh? Oh, he's copped a head right to the nuts. Tedesco's butt crack. Ahoy! He's nearly taken security's head off. I have no idea what the wasted world of sports is. Waste of World of Sports, ahoy! How's everybody doing? Quentin Paul, let's go! Let's go. Oh, unfortunately, we've got this Titans game to get through. Oh, man. Can we just bypass this Titans game and go straight to the big one? The Broncos versus Raiders? That'd be nice. Anyway, we're gonna... We're gonna try and struggle through this Titans manly game. Robert M, ahoy there, mate. How are you? Scrambled eggs, ahoy. Quentin Paul, ahoy. I've just got a really bad feeling about this game. I feel like the Titans, they're going to win at some point. So maybe they'll put in another good performance. But I just feel like they put so much into last week. They had their best performance of the year so far against the Raiders. And they very nearly pulled it off. I'm a bit concerned about tonight. I feel like tonight we could be back to the old the old Titans smashings that we're so accustomed to. Oh, that was a that was a long time ago, Robin M. Cheers for uh pointing that out. But yeah, Michelle's on the way to the Gabba to see the Lions take on Geelong. <clears throat> and uh can am I Dolphins, Neil, and Gamer Boy 210. That was quite some time ago. I'm not even sure they're still there. Quentin Paul says the big money game tonight, Broncos Raiders. <laughs> yeah, big money. What? You're not going to the game? I thought you said you got free tickets to the game. Sports Vault AU, same game multi that requires leaving the house. Yeah. Oh, man, I hate leaving the house now. I really do. I'm so bad. I am so bad that everything, everything. I even do home delivery chemist warehouse now. Home delivery chemist warehouse. The dog needs new piss mats. Home delivery. I have to go out to work things every now and then. I'm like, oh, Christ, how am I going to get out of this? Uh, COVID test. Damn it, I don't have COVID. I've got to go now. All right, Manly to win. Ruben Garrick and Coca-Cola. Anytime try scorers. That's our three-leg multi. Brought to you by Sports Vault. Sports Vault. AU for this game and this game that's now underway. We're going to struggle through it because I think it's safe to say that we're all pretty excited about the Broncos against Ricky's Green Goblins later tonight. I mean, that is clearly the main event of the evening out of the three games that have been available. That is the main event. So we're looking forward to that one. Broncos to win quite comprehensively against those Viking clapping bastards from down south. It was funny, I was talking to him, having a chat to Morgan. Morgan, the uh, the phantom, I guess you would call him the phantom, or uh, what's the what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the phantom, the myth, like this, this supposed Morgan character that was meant to be part of the channel, but was in one video, never to be seen or heard from again. I was chatting to him earlier, and... Um, we were talking about the Broncos Raiders game and, and I was just ripping into the Raiders in the in the chat and he's like, Mate, do you do you hate the Raiders more than you hate the Broncos or something? I said, Yes, bloody yes. Quite substantially, as a matter of fact. Yes, I will actually it's gonna be so weird to witness me cheering on the Broncos tonight. It's just gonna feel ah, it's just gonna feel so bizarre. Anyway, fifth and last here for the Sea Eagles and 
Cherry Evans gets the kick away. High down into the corner of Cam Pereira, who takes it. Yeah, where will the Titans' first victory come from? I really did think it was going to be last week against the Raiders, and they came so painfully close. Dez already looks flustered. What happened? I think the game is two minutes old. Both teams have gone through a completed set each, and Dez looks up. Look, he's up there ready to rip strips off people. Gerard Susu, ahoy there. Fifth and last here for the Titans. 45 out. Tanner Boyd back into the team. Puts it high. Taken to the back for Manly. Connor Crowley, ahoy mate. How are you doing? Cheers for the heads up. Robert M says Walters is coaching against a team he used to play for. Did he really? Wow, there you go. I know that there was uh, Walters at the Raiders. <clears throat> Roseanne George, ahoy there, up the Titans. This kick from inside the 40, angles towards the sideline. But the Titans get across and cover it off. Brimson at fullback. There's been a little bit of swapsies with the Titans. So AJ Brimson is wearing the number six, but he's playing at fullback tonight. And uh, in at the five eighths is Tanner Boyd returning. Spank the Monkey says Des Hasler could be sacked before Origin. I really doubt it. Spank. Can I call you Spank? I really doubt it. I think Des has got a long-term contract. I think he's got the time that he will need to turn this team around. I don't think his job, even, even if they lost every single game this season, I don't think his job is under threat. The coaches who are under threat at the moment would have to be, uh, what's his face? Uh, yeah, that guy. <laughs> um, uh, Rabbitohs coach. Who am I thinking of? Please help me out, chat room. I've gone blank. I've gone mentally blank. Um, Demetrio, JD, he's definitely under the pump. Brad Arthur, I reckon, is under the pump. Penalty here for Manly. Yeah, Brad Arthur would be under the microscope. Um, let's not forget uh, Newcastle. I've just, I've gone totally blank tonight after that first game well i'll tell you what it is in all honesty as well i'll be completely honest i am really not excited about this game at all my head is not here right now as Perseca puts the head down runs over the top of a couple of titans yeah out of all the games this weekend this was one i was probably the least excited for Cherry Evans. Now Tommy Turbo puts the dummy on. That was just way too simple. Tommy Turbo sells the dummy. And the Titans look completely foolish there in defense. Oh, it must suck to be a Titans supporter this year. I can only imagine. Uh, as, yeah, so Adam O'Brien, I reckon, is going to be under pressure as well. Because the Knights are not going to have the season that they had last year. Let's not... Let's not forget that Adam O'Brien was one week away from being fired last season. And then the Knights went on that run because they had um, they had that string of about 10 Sunday afternoon games at home in a row. Je I mean, jeez, I like to give the Broncos a lot of stick for all the, all the games at Suncorp, but holy hell, the Newcastle Knights last season and their run of games on Sunday afternoons in Newcastle... Bloody hell. I mean, that was next level. Newcastle became the new Suncorp. So, but let's, let's not forget, he was under pressure last year. So he'll be under the pump again if Newcastle don't perform, and I really don't think they will. So, but Des, look, Des has been given this job. He's been given the task of rebuilding 
the Titans into a finals footy team. And I think he'll be given the time. Des has got the runs on the board and the credentials to be given the time in order to do that. So unless he alone decides, you know what, this is a bunch of rabble and I want no part of it and walks away from the job, I don't think he'll be fired. Ruben Garrick moves in and strikes it and the Manly Seagulls lead early. As we expected. Six points nil. What about Bennett at the Dolphins? Well, my theory is my theory is uh Demetrio gets the sack and um Uncle Wayne takes the job at Souths. That's what I think is is most likely to happen. Wayne Bennett's time at the Dolphins is up. It was always meant to be up. This was the plan. He'll be looking for something to do next season. Wayne Bennett's basically just going to float around until the NRL expands again. And the NRL puts Wayne Bennett in charge of the new expansion team, just like they did with the Dolphins. As Cherry Evans fires the cutout pass across to Jason Saab. Saab goes up over halfway. Gets those big giraffe legs pumping. Look at the size of the man. Holy hell. And Manly are just going side to side on a training drill at the moment. And they've opened them up again. The grubber kick through for Coca-Cola. Inside to Tommy Turbo. Manly are lighting it up here. Oh, this is going to be a long old night for the Titans. Brooks in midfield to DCE. Inside ball to Lodge. And Big Matt Lodge puts the head down. Tackle five. Ten out from the line. They come to the right. Cherry Evans shows. Passes it out to Brooks. Cut out pass to Saab. Saab scores in the corner. Way too easy again. Way too easy. And Manly lead 10 nil. Oh, it's going to be a demolition job. Mercy rule. Mercy rule. Ten points to nil. Going at a point a minute. Well, better, better than a point a minute at the moment, Manly. Ten points to nil, eight minutes gone. Kick to come from out wide. Tommy Turbo, Jason Saab, the two try scorers. Sports Vault says Manly looking like how Penrith should have performed here. But yeah. <laughs> I still think that the Titans completely played themselves out last week against the Raiders. That was the one that they needed to win, the Titans. That was their win. They threw everything into that game. I think they've got nothing left backing up for this week. Just my personal opinion. They threw absolutely 110% into that uh, Raiders game. And now they've just got nothing left. And also, they're playing a substantially better team in Manly than the Raiders. Let's not forget that as well. Ruben Garrick now from the opposite sideline. He kicked one from the other side earlier. He's hooked this one back around too much, too much. It holds its line. Not enough. It just goes away to the left of the upright. It was a very solid effort, though, from Ruben Garrick. And Manly, 10 points to nil. It's a walk in the park at the moment. Just a casual stroll for the Sea Eagles. So yeah, before that try was scored, we were talking about the coaching. That's that's my two cents on the coaching merry-go-round that we're potentially about to experience at the moment. As the Titans get us back underway. I feel like we should call the Titans the tits this season. You know how we have a shortened name for all the teams? I feel like the way that they're playing, Gold Coast should definitely be the tits. Although the tit, no, the tits is like, um, the tits could be too complimentary. Scratch that then. A kick on tackle three from Croker. Dummy half inside the 40. Turning the Titans around. 
Remsen looks up, tries to find some space. DCE wraps him up. Both teams completing at 100%. Yeah, honestly, uh, looking at the draw for the weekend, this was a real struggle. I honestly, I almost skipped it. I almost went, you know what? I'll do the Panthers Tigers game. I'll skip this one and I'll come back for the Broncos Raiders. But I thought, you know what? To hell with it. Let's do them all. Tanner Boyd from inside the 40. Not a lot of meters here for the Titans. And the kick is straight down the throat of Tommy T. It is a definite rebuild year for the Titans, though, as well. Let's take that into account as well. When we're considering Desi and, and his position, it, it's clearly... I, th I think people were overstating it. People were probably overstating, I think, or expecting too much of the, de the Des factor. I'd see it in the chat every now and then. The Des factor. But yeah, but he's got to... He's got to... A coach has to come in and, and build the team around their methods. They can't just come in and make magic happen. Not to say that that doesn't happen from time to time, but with a little bit of luck and all the right pieces in the right place. But I don't think anybody truly was expecting Des to just come in and suddenly the Titans are magically finals contenders. It was going to take a year or two for him to build the team up, to build the troops up around the style of footy that he wants to play. The Cuban egg, ahoy there. You got two wrong yesterday? Yeah, well, I was 0-3 and three to start this round. Got the first win with the Panthers last game. And hopefully that continues for this one as Kelly goes on a good dart. Brian Kelly, and he's a solid player. A six again now for the Titans. This is... Oh, just cheers to myself. Did you hear that? This is some quality ball and some quality territory now. Potawaka loses it. Was it ripped out? Yes, it was, says the referee. Illegal strip. Penalty right out in front. Take the two. Always take the two. Let's get a score update in Super Rugby, shall we? Super Rugby Pacific. Because it is the Blues taking on the Brumbies. And at the moment, the Blues leading 14 points to nil over the Brumbies. 34 minutes gone. Tanner Boyd puts the dummy on. Malcolm says Titans fans aren't nice anyway. I, I wouldn't know, Malcolm. I don't know any. I, I honestly I don't know a single Titans supporter. Foran with the cutout pass. They must score here, surely. And Cam Pereira dives over in the corner to make it 10 points to four. They hit back. Brilliant pass there from Kieran Foran. And he did extremely well there, Kieran Foran, because he put that pass over the head of Jason Saab, all 10 feet tall of him, leaping in the air, and the ball still went over his head. So that, I mean, that's a quality pass from Kieran Foran. To put that one over the top of the head of somebody that tall, he even leaped into the air, Jason Saab, to try and intercept that one. Quality pass, quality play. James Strong, ahoy there, mate. How are you doing? The Titans hit back with their first real venture. Mr. Ed's dead, ahoy! From about five meters in from the left-hand touchline, Tanner Boyd with this conversion attempt. 
It starts out wide to the right. It's hooking back. It's hooking back. It's over. And it's 10 points to six. Malcolm asks, Wasted, do you follow Formula One? I used to, Malcolm. I used to love my Formula One, but um, when when all that stuff went down with Red Bull overspending the budget and then not getting punished for it, I kind of lost interest. I'll tune back in again in 2026 when the new regulations come in, but it's going to be pretty dull up until then. Because Red, Red Bull got that overspend. They were allowed to get away with it. They're going to be ahead up all the way up until the new regulations. And it's going to make for some painful viewing for everybody. I mean, Formula One's always been a sport that's been dominated by one team. But usually there's, uh, uh, usually there's some competition there in a few races at least. If not from inter-team rivalry. Like two Mercedes drivers battling out, two Ferrari drivers battling it out. But um, Red Bull, Max Verstappen's a protected species at Red Bull. They they won't let they won't let Checo Perez race him, and it makes for some very boring viewing. But uh, yeah, Formula One's the only sport I know where you can be you can be found. Guilty of cheating the rules and regulations, like Red Bull overspent by about $2 million. You get found to be cheating. You get to keep your championships. And you also get to negotiate your own punishment. What the hell? That is the only sport in the world where I know that that happens. And it kind of makes the whole thing a little bit of a joke, doesn't it? Ivan Storm, ahoy, mate. How are you doing? James Strong says, manly playing tight. It is Manly with the ball back. Woodsy's on. I'd love to sit down and have a chat with Woodsy. Tommy Turbo out on the left to Coca-Cola. Up over halfway they go on tackle five. Manly may have been guilty here of just falling into the trap that teams can fall into. The first two tries were so easy. Maybe they just went to sleep a little bit. That try from the Titans should, you would think, wake Manly up a little bit. Because those first two tries were just... Training drills. It looked like it was going to be a huge night on the scoreboard. Maybe just a little bit guilty of, of dropping off, falling asleep a little bit. Both teams still completing at 100%. A quarter of the way gone through this match. It's pretty impressive that they're both completing so highly. As high as it can get. Boyd out the back to Brimson. They had numbers out to the right. Couldn't get the ball free. But they've done well here, the Titans. They've got themselves back into this contest. Boyd puts the kick down. Saab takes it on the full. Look at the size of this human being. Jeez. I mean, he's not... Jason Saab, for those of you who have seen him, he's not big, right? Like, in terms of... He's, he's very lanky. He's about 17 foot tall, but he's very, very lanky. He looks like he'd break in half if you fell on him the wrong way. Snap. Just completely snap in two. Can you imagine if he put some serious bulk on? He might lose some speed, but... Jeez, he'd be a, a menace down that edge. Here goes Woodsy up over halfway. James Strong says, am I the only one that thinks Manly is top tier, but they play down sometimes to the competition? Well, it's funny, James, because that's... Oh, the kick is too deep, and it's going to be a seven-tackle set. Cam Pereira gets the foot back into the end goal, and, and there, there is what we're talking about. Just a simple mistake. Cherry Evans overcooking the kick. Seven-tackle set. Titans. Out of nowhere. No pressure, no nothing, just a simple error. And that's kind of what we're we're talking about there is is Manly. The first two tries, I think they they were way too easy. And they've clearly dropped off the ball a little bit here, the Sea Eagles. And if you listen to any footy players talk, they talk about momentum. And how momentum is hard to win back as Brian Kelly now goes straight through. Support outside from Cam Pereira. And the Titans get their second. Oh, Manly have well and truly dropped off here. 
Brian Kelly goes straight through. A simple draw and pass on Tommy T at the back. And we're all locked up just like that. Khan Pereira gets a double. Is the weekend of upsets set to continue? Manly scored the first two tries so easily. They were carving the Titans up at will. I called it a training run. And maybe Manly, the players out there perhaps too, felt like it was a bit of a training run and they have completely dropped off and the Titans have lifted. And here they are to a conversion attempt to take the lead for God's sake. With 19 and a half minutes to go until the halftime break, after the start that this match had, I never imagined we'd be talking about the possibility of the Titans leading this match. The kick to take the lead. NRL is so wild sometimes, indeed. That's why we love it, right? <laughs> Around the grounds with Robin M. The Blues are beating the Brumbies 22-0, 41st minute. Yes! I hate the Brumbies. I hate them. 10 points all, Tenor Boyd moves in, strikes it well, it's on target, it's right down the middle, and the Titans lead this game. Yes, you heard correctly, the Gold Coast Titans lead this game. After trailing 10-0 after 8 minutes, it's been all Gold Coast. Twelve points to ten. Nineteen minutes left to the halftime break. Yeah, I, I absolutely I love the Queensland Reds. The Queensland Reds are my Australian team. Cause uh, I go for the All Blacks and I go for the New Zealand Super Rugby teams whenever it comes to Trans Tasman rivalry. But my the Queensland Reds are my Australian team. Especially when Big Bad Brad was the coach. Big Bad Brad Thorne. What a legend. Wow. The Titans with the lead here. Playing out of their skin now. Rumbling upfield. Haas goes to ground. 40 out from their own line. Now King Joffy Jaffa. Takes it up to halfway. Fifth and last. Tanner Boyd gets the kick in. Tommy Turbo bobbles it. Oh, can you imagine if Tommy Turbo started making mistakes? What would that signal for the... Oh, now here comes David Fafita. He's up. He's wandering the sidelines. He's ready to get let loose onto this game. Uh, yeah, who is the Reds coach now? That is a good question. One that I don't know the answer to, I'm afraid. Fifth and last here, 40 out from the line, Manly. Trying to turn this game around. Jerry Evans puts the kick in. Pre oh, perfectly timed hit at the back from Tommy Talau. Les, Les Kiss, really? Well, there you go. Oh, and the Titans spill it. Manly come away with it. Paseca. Les Kiss, a, a, a defensive machine. So there you go. And uh, former rugby league boy, too, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Six again. Jake Trebojevic out to DC. DCE is... Uh, Waving the ball around everywhere like an Italian man speaking. Well, my tits grow, ahoy! Paseca takes tackle two in front of the posts. 
They go left. Croker to Brooks. Brooks looking for runners. Finds Tommy T. They go blindside again. Nothing doing there. They get another six again. Waddell takes tackle one a couple of meters out. Brooks to Jake. Puts the head down. Right in front of the post here. Croker out to the right. DC inside ball to Holly. Molly Olakowatu, who burst through the first two tackles. He's over the line, but they've held him up. An incredible. Have they held him up? No, they haven't. Somehow, Holly Molly Olakowatu has got the ball down. Incredible effort. Ola Kawatu, what a try. He beat the first two tackles, and I thought that they turned him on his back and held him up, but somehow he kept up the fight. Well, I say somehow, but look at the size of him. Four Gold Coast defenders on him, and he still manages to get that ball down. On his back, he was. On his back with four defenders on him, and he still gets the ball down. Notice this. Ahoy there. And Jim Fave, ahoy mate. That is just a monstrous effort from Olokowatu. An incredible try. And Manly retake the lead. 14 12 kick to come. It's free it's freezing in Brisbane too, to be perfectly honest. I mean it's a it's a, a nice temperature. I like it. But it's what most people who are used to Brisbane weather would certainly consider freezing. Try confirmed. Ruben Garrick looking to extend this lead. But Manly have done well to reclaim. We were talking about momentum and how hard it can be to take momentum back once you lose it. Garrick with the conversion and Manly leads 16 points to 12. Fourteen minutes left to the halftime break. What a try that was from Ola Kowatu. Amazing effort. Richard Hetta, it could it could it's what it's cold out in an Ipswich Toowoomba. Oh no, Ruben Garrick from the kickoff. He's put it down. He's done his best Ben Hunt impression. Ruben Garrick from the kickoff. They're going to captain's challenge. They're captain's challenge. A uh, knock on from the kickoff. Unbelievable. The claim from Garrick is that he's lost it backwards, but this is going to be a hard one to win, I'm afraid. Sorry to say that uh, they're going to lose out on this one, Manly. A knock on from the kickoff and... They've lost their captain's challenge. Bad call there from DCE. I mean, surely he saw it. You back your your players, I suppose, but the buck stops with the captain. That is a big mistake. They've just reclaimed the lead, and now they give the Titans a scrum ten out on the attack and a penalty to boot. Do they take the two here, the Titans? A gift two points. Uh, I'll put the scrum down again, I suppose, if they're allowed.
If Manly break early a second time, it's an immediate sin bin. There we go. Scrum resets. Out to the right. Numbers here. Brimson out to Fafita. Jojo Fafita, that is. Centimeters short on tackle one. Foran inside ball to Haas. Tackle two in midfield. Titans. This is a gift for them. They need to take it. Foran inside of Fodawaka. Tackled by Woods and Jake Trebojevic. Crash ball. Bahas gets the offload away. Here they come out to the left now. David Fafita puts the step on. Shrugs off DCE. Offloads back to Foran. Foran is crunched. And they've lost a lot of ground now. They're 20 meters out from the line on tackle four. Big defense from Manly. Bottawaker again. Burst through the first tackle. Is brought down. 10 meters out, tackle five, left-hand side they go. AJ Brimson puts the grubber kick in, it's too deep. And it's a seven tackle set for Manly. They can get themselves all the way back up the other end now. Ethan Bullymore's on for a stint. Woodsy, hey, hey, Ron Woods, up over halfway. Cherry Evans, he's lost the ball. Oh, Manly, what's going on? And now the foul to secure the loose ball, but the referee calls it back. Double knock on, he says. Lucas uploads, ahoy. Cherry Evans, he's having a little bit of a, a nightmarish start to this game. Is it the slippery conditions out there? I mean, it is pretty wet. It is pretty wet. It has been raining. It is raining, as a matter of fact. But yes, DCE, not a great start. Dogs versus Knights tomorrow. Go Doggies, 100%. I think the Knights are in for a long, long season. And the dogs are on the improve. Doggies for mine. But anyway, Titans with the ball here. Up over halfway they go on tackle three. Fafita backs into the defense. Forty out from the line. Oh, this is good work for the Titans. Boyd, though, can't get the ball free out to the right. And Manly do well. Their defense holds on for now. Fifth and last. 20 out from the line. Where's Boyd? Boyd's over here on the... No, he's not. It's four and on the left. They go through the hands. Brimson. Dummies. Gets the arms free. Offloads to Kelly. Kelly puts the grubber kick in. Tommy Turbo's perfectly placed. Tries to put the step on Cam Pereira and does. Dives back into the field of play. What an amazing effort there from Tommy Turbo. Oh no, Saab's lost the ball in huge defense from the Gold Coast Titans. Jason Saab loses the ball. What a hit. Shoulders right into the chest under the ball. It spills forward and the Titans have it back. What a huge tackle. That, I mean, say what you will. That was a great, great tackle. Whether you go for the Titans or not, you've got to appreciate efforts like that one. And it was Brian Kelly again. Brian Kelly, probably a standout player for the Titans this season in what's been a miserable old year so far. Brian Kelly has been a consistently great player. Wasn't it Kelly who took the conversion last week as well? Was that him? Their fir his first, uh, no, not his first ever kick, but it was a big kick. The Titans on the attack again. 
Eight and a half minutes to go. A six again for the Titans. Trailing by four, they're a meter out. A golden opportunity. Foran with a flat pass to King Jeffy Joffa. Or Jolly Jeffa. Whatever it is. No, Jaffy Joffa. I was right the first time. And now David Fafita fights his way through. One, two, three tacklers and scores under the posts. Manly invited them into this game. They said, thank you very much. Manly took the momentum back. Reclaim the lead. They then invited the Titans back in again, and the Titans say, thank you very much. We'll have the lead back if you don't want it. And it's big David Fafita bulldozing his way through at least two manly defenders. One, two, three, four. Four can't bring him down from two meters out. A try next to the post, and the Titans are about to lead. 16 all at the moment, but the kick from right beside the posts. It will be a simple conversion for Foran or Brimson or Boyd, whoever takes it. It's been Boyd kicking tonight, I think. David Fafita has scored in five straight games against the Sea Eagles. Interesting. From right in front, Tenor Boyd. I don't know why he's taking this much time to put it over, but there he goes. Right down, right down the middle of the posts. It's over. And the Titans lead 18 points to 16. A topsy turvy game, this one. Back and forth. Manly lead, Titans lead, Manly lead, Titans lead. Six and a half to go till half time. Jesus H. Christ, what is up with KO lately? Seriously. The buffering. And then you, you contact their technical support and they say, it must be your internet connection. No, it is not my $200 a month internet connection. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's your crappy service. And here we go, buffering again. I'm already 10 seconds behind on this goddamn thing and it's still buffering. Get your act together, I say, KO Sports. Lucas uploads, you go for the dogs, so you don't really care who wins this game. Ivan Storm says Manly will win this game. <laughs> it's one of those things like... The Titans are going to win eventually. It would be a rare and extraordinary feat to go through an entire season without at least one single victory. And it's going to be so interesting because nobody wants to be the first team. No one wants to be the team that lost first to the Titans this season. Five minutes to go until the halftime break. Titans leading by two. Lodge with a big hit up, but he f finds a brick wall of Titans defenders. Jake Trebojevic to Brooks, out the back to Tommy Turbo. Coca-Cola up over halfway. Down the short side they stay. No, back open side. And there, dummying is Corey Wattell. Fifth and last. 30 out from the line. Cherry Evans. Cross field kick. Oh, did Khan Pereira get the foot back? Yes, he did. Another overcooked kick from Cherry Evans and a seven tackle set. Cherry Evans' kicking has abandoned him tonight. 
Ooh, I'm not too sure about that call, but hey, it's in the bag. There was no time to review it. Four minutes left in this first half. Titans. Drew Brimson now in for Fida to Cam Pereira. 25 out from the line, a few tackles left up their sleeve. Boyd holds up the pass off, oh, flying in off the wing as Tommy Talau, and he folds Smith Shields in half. Different James, James Strong. You know we've got the we've got the two Jameses. <laughs> she's uh, talking. She's talking to a different James. AJ Brimson flies through the air and plucks the kick out from right under the nose of the Manly defenders. And AJ Brimson scores. Gold Coast lead, 22-16, kick to come. The weekend of upsets brings us another surprise. Tommy Turbo caught flat-footed and AJ Brimson, little AJ Brimson flying over the top of Big Tommy Turbo. That is a, a very, very terrifying sight with State of Origin just around the corner. To see Tommy Turbo stood up so flat-footed and, and so badly beaten by AJ Brimson is a terrifying sight with Origin just around the corner. 22-16, kick to come from right beside the post. It's going to be 24-16. Oh, the Titans are on here for their first win. Michelle just turned in, it just transformed into Fred Flintstone in the chat room. Tanner Boyd, three from three tonight. Another easy kick. What is happening this weekend? Boyd moves in, strikes it. It's through, and the Titans lead 24-16. This week of NRL has been full of upsets, says Lucas Uploads. Ellis Williams says, up the Tars. Oh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> Look, Waz and Paz. Waz and Paz are bad enough. We're not having up the Tars as well. Come on. Let's not. A minute and a half to go until the break. Who in the hell are the Pars? The Panthers. Go, do go Dodgers. Ah. A kick on tackle four here for the Titans turning Tommy Turbo around. It's going to be a horrible bounce, though. Terrible bounce. And a seven tackle set to end the half for Manly. They're not going to get through the full tackles anyway, so it doesn't matter. It's really irrelevant with 48 seconds to go. They're not going to get through the full set. Jeez, what do you say at half time? If you're uh, Seedbold, Anthony Seedbold has got a lot of a lot of explaining to do. Trebojevic to bully more. Twenty five seconds left. This will definitely be the last set of the of the half. That's for sure. 
DCE out to Tommy Turbo. Double pumps the pass to Saab. Saab in open space. Back inside to Tommy Turbo. Tommy Turbo puts the step on. And Tommy Turbo gets a double. 24 points to 20 kick to come. There are at least a couple of forward passes in there, but let's not worry about that. Well, I mean, I was still right. They weren't going to get through the full set. They didn't. Jason Saab gets those big giraffe legs pumping. Back inside to Tommy Turbo. 24-20 kick to come. Why is Kieran Foran celebrating in the background? Does he realize he doesn't play for Manly anymore? He's down in back play. He's down on his haunches in back play going, yeah. Somebody tell Foran that he doesn't play for Manly. I think he needs reminding. Twenty-four twenty kick to come. The only difference between the two teams at the moment, well, when when this conversion goes over from Ruben Garrick. Oh, wait a minute. Has the try been confirmed yet? Has this try been confirmed yet? No, it hasn't. Foran is making sure that this gets reviewed. Kieran Foran obviously saw something happen in back play, but he is making sure that this gets reviewed. It hasn't been confirmed just yet. Oh, he thinks that's it. He th Kieran Foran seems to think that that's obstruction. Okay, he's kidding himself. He's absolutely kidding himself. Try confirmed. 24-20. So the only difference, assuming that Ruben Garrick puts this over... The only difference between the two teams will be a missed conversion from Garrick. And we go to halftime, 24 points to 22. A Ruben Garrick missed conversion is the only difference between the two teams. Karen Foran needing the rules explained to him. We should get Michelle to sit in on that conversation, yeah? Jamie, ahoy there. Just been watching the F1 quali. Oh, jeez. Sorry, mate. <laughs> How are the Titans ahead? Um, they've scored more points. I don't know how else to explain it. They've scored more points. <laughs> UFC is currently on a plane flying to Adelaide. All right, Westworld of Sports half time here. 24 22, the Titans. Leading by a missed Ruben Garrick conversion. I'm going to have myself a quick break. And we'll be back for the second half. Right after this.
right, Waste World of Sports halftime here. 24 points to 22. The Gold Coast Titans with the lead. A missed Ruben Garrick conversion. The only difference between the two. Should be a blockbuster second half. The Titans, they've, they've, they're certainly on the improve. But Manly have not helped themselves. That's for sure. A good finish to the half, though. A breakaway try. Questionable pass. <laughs> that one back inside from Saab to Tommy Turbo. Questionable at best. But, uh, hey, look. Some of those get called. Some of them don't. Just so happens that this one didn't. Try time Manly. They're back in it. Well, they were never out of it, but you know what I mean. Ellis Williams, before the break, raised the question. So, if you wanted KP for Queensland, I'm assuming that's Caelan Ponga. If you wanted KP for Queensland, which would you choose? Centre? No. No. Centre, meaning Holmes drops out, or Utility? No. Ben Hunt drops out. What are you choosing? I can only choose between the two. If I can only choose between those two options exclusively, then uh, Ponga plays 14 and Ben Hunt drops out. But uh, Caelan Ponga is your fullback. Simple as that. I mean, as a New South Wales supporter, please, please, Billy. Billy Slater, please, for the love of Christ, pick Reese Walsh. Please, I beg you. Because the defensive liability that comes with Reese Walsh at fullback means that New South Wales actually have a chance of winning. Caelan Pong is your fullback. Or he's not in the squad. Simple as that. And um, if you want any evidence as to why... Kalen Ponga should not play in the centres. Just look at New South Wales over the past. <laughs> they put Clint Gutherson at centre. Didn't work out. Great fullback. Terrible at the centres. Um, they've chucked Nico Hines in at centre. Didn't work out. Um... You know, to, to, Tommy Turbo is pretty much the only exception to that rule of picking players in their positions. So I really don't think that Billy Slater, honestly, is is foolish enough to play Caelan Ponga out of position at center. He's been involved enough in Origin games as a player and a coach for Queensland to know that it doesn't work. Very rare, very rare that it works. Anyway, as I said, Tommy Turbo is really the only exception to that rule. So no, I think um, I think you put in the centres a player that actually plays in the centres week in, week out, or is is capable of it at least. That's my two cents. And, I, and just in case anyone's wondering, because I know it might come up in the chat room, there might be people thinking, hang on, what about uh, Kurt Capewell? Kurt Capewell got picked in the center. Kurt Capewell was the center. Kurt Capewell had a very long history of playing in the centers. He was forced to fill in through injury, but he was a center that converted into a second rower, not the other way around. So that's why that worked out. And he was also playing centre up against Clint Gutherson. So, yeah, they, they got away with that one, Queensland. Hard to believe that Origin, it's not far off. We need a little Origin counter down the bottom of the screen. State of Origin countdown. It begins now.
Just trying to find out how many days away it actually is. All right, I think we can probably end this poll now. The poll, 118 votes. Not unexpected that um, very largely in favor of Manly, given that that's the first game of the night. Gamer Mel just needs Ruben Garrick to score, and it's another win. Nice. Well, there's a whole half coming up. But that, okay, so there we go. 48% say go Sea Eagles. 27% say go Titans. So, yeah, as I was saying, not surprising that uh, the poll is very heavily skewed in favor of the first game, the game that's on right now. 19% say go Broncos and 4% uh, say go the Raiders. I'm also not surprised that there's a lack of of Raiders supporters hanging around here on the Waste of World of Sports. 24 points to 22 here at halftime. The Titans, they were invited into the contest by Manly Mistakes. They said, thank you very much. We need all the help we can get this season. We'll take it. And here they are. A missed conversion ahead at halftime. It's going to be a very crucial first score in the second half, I think. Kimbae Koga, ahoy there. Watching from Madang, Papua New Guinea. Cheers. Once more, may I say once again, I feel like I say it every time, but it's so true. A big, big shout out and salute to our friends in Papua New Guinea, a very passionate rugby league supporting country. Cheers to PNG, huh? Ah, yes. Twenty-four, twenty-two at half time. Who would have thought that it'd be this close? This one. <laughs> Gary Hilla Moria. Moria, go Eagles from PNG. So who who have Papua New Guinea got in the next game? Just out of curiosity, is PNG behind the Broncos, or is PNG behind Ricky and his Green Goblins from Canberra? As the teams are back out for the second half here. Manly with a crucial try right on the stroke of half time to make it a two point ball game. I mean, <laughs> appreciate just how critical that try was. It would have been such a different half time chat if it was eight points the difference rather than two. And we are underway for the second half. Titans versus Manly. Cherry Evans gets under it, takes it, and it is a rampaging, charging Matthew Lodge from the back fence to get this second half underway. Bullymore now gets a 10-meter run up to the 30. Jake Trebojevic passes it along. Corey Waddell backs into the defense. 40 out from their own line here, Manly. This is a very solid opening set. Lodge with hit up number two. Straight into Aaron Clark. Out the back to Cherry Evans. Can he get the arms free? He can't. Brian Kelly again. Great defense. Fifth and last for Manly. Brooks gets the kick away. It's high. It's right down the middle of the field. And it's taken on the full at the back. Old mate Rat's Tail, Jojo Fafita. Quite a few Rat's Tails in the footy at the moment, isn't there? Oh, Michelle says Carlton have come storming back in the AFL. No one cares. But it did remind me, around the grounds in Super Rugby Pacific, 
the Blues, 61 minutes into the game, are absolutely put in a destruction job on the Brumbies. 41 points to nil. Oh, that's a beautiful sight. Oh, you love to see it. The Blues decimating the Brumbies. <laughs> see, that's a sign of things to come. The Canberra team is getting demolished in Super Rugby. It's going to set up for the Canberra team getting equally demolished in the NRL later tonight. I love it. An abysmal night incoming for Canberra teams in the football codes. Manly have the ball back. Both teams trade their first set. Not with the round so far in the NRL. Well, they haven't played yet, so of course not. Hang on, what are you talking about? Me saying that it's not a good night for Canberra teams. Of course not, they haven't played yet. <laughs> there is only one Canberra team in the... In the NRL. Oh you're, oh, you're talking about upsets. Okay. Never mind me. I've had a lot to drink. You're talking about upsets. Intercept here from Coca-Cola. And Cola runs around to score under the post. And Manly, they start the second half just as well as they finish the first. And not only that, Coca-Cola, that's a lock from Sports Vault in our same game multi. Twenty six, twenty four, kick to come. Coca-Cola in under the posts. Yes, my apologies there, Michelle. I d you're obviously talking about upsets, but I was specifically talking about teams from Canberra and it being a, a, a long old night for teams from Canberra. And you've gone, not with the NRL so far this round. And I'm like, what the f But yeah, I, I, now, I now see the angle that you're coming from. It was completely detached from the angle I was coming from being Canberra teams, but uh, yes. Fair enough. Yes, it has been a round of upsets so far, but here, Manly have set about putting this right. Ruben Garrick from right in front. We've got a lock on Coca-Cola. In the same game, multi. Speaking of... Speaking of the Broncos-Raiders game, as the Brumbies have scored a try in Super Rugby Pacific, 65 minutes gone, the Blues 41, the Brumbies 7. Nate from We Are Family. Ahoy there. Uh, speaking of Broncos-Raiders... The if you want to get in early on the sports vault AU same game multi uh Stuart Cobo Oates anytime try scorers paying twenty three dollars on sports bet. I'm gonna go ahead and jump on in as this uh this game gets back underway for the Titans. I'm gonna go ahead and jump on in on that one. Uh Stuart Oates Cobo Anytime try scorers is the Sports Vault AU same game multi for the next game. Broncos Raiders coming up if you want to jump on board with that early. Uh, so, what did I say? Cobo, Oates, Stewart. Cobo, Oates, Stewart. Fifth and last here for Manly. Putting this one high into the corner.
The offload. It's a good offload. Tanner Boyd's got it for the Titans. Trailing 28-24. All right, I've got to get this bet on. Then I can concentrate again. Oates, Cobo, Chevy Stewart. Jam Jam, ahoy. Up over halfway go the Titans. Brimson caught on the fifth and last. We've got time off here. Nope, time back on. 30 out from the line here, the Titans. Fifth and last. On the short side, Boyd waits, puts it high. How's the chase? It's good. Tommy Turbo, though, moves forward, takes it. Malcolm says, people won't remember the close score, but another loss by the Titans. Well, the history books will certainly... It'll certainly be down as a loss. As a Manly get a penalty. And the kick into touch sees Manly 35 out from the Titans line on tackle one. This is a real chance now for the Sea Eagles. Anime and Moore says, come on, Manly, seal the win. Here's Jake Trebojevic out to DCE, to Tommy Turbo, and now Saab in space. Kelly gets across. Brian Kelly, what a star. Honestly, Brian Kelly is an absolute standout in this Titan squad at the moment. I don't think it can be appreciated any, anymore, just how good he's going. Jake Trebojevic, crash ball to Lodge. Running right off his shoulder. Fifth and last now for Manly. Inside the 10, Brooks out to Tommy Turbo. Beats one. Tommy T gets the arms free. Offloads. And Tommy Talau can't collect it. And over into touch it goes. The Titans hold on. All right, sorry about that. I'm all set for the night. Yeah. That's my night set in stone. Tommy Turbo takes it at the back for Manly. Uh, what did we end up getting for dinner? You know what? I ended up ordering Red Rooster. Yeah, we ended up going for the Red Rooster. It was kind of late, so there wasn't really a whole lot open. It was either dirty kebabs, a dirty pizza, or a red rooster. I'm not going to say anything about the pantsing we just saw from Paseca either. People are starting to ask too many questions. I do, but I don't. I don't really have a, a fully functional kitchen at the moment, James. Home renos are going on. The kitchen is is out of play at the moment, for the most part. But yeah, I love cooking. I was actually, I was actually a step away from uh, one of my YouTube channels being a cooking channel. So yeah, gee, oh Christ, I love to cook. Yeah, love it. But um, yeah, once the once the kitchen's all up and running properly, I'll be I'll be back in there for sure. Gordon Ramsay and, and Curtis Stone 
my uh, my two favorite chefs. Oh, Ben Lingo, ahoy there, Seagulls fans, go! All right, the Wenham Seagulls. Mashed pumpkin or mashed potatoes? Yeah, it really, it depends what I'm having. I mean, mashed potatoes with my steak. But yeah, it really depends on the on the rest of the dish. But even mashed pumpkin, I'm not really a mashed pumpkin on its own. Like I would, I like to do a mix of mashed pumpkin and sweet potato together. So I guess I never really have mashed pumpkin on its own. Brooks with a huge cutout pass. And again, Tommy Talau can't wrangle it in. And here come the Titans. It's a loose inside ball. But diving on it is Bo Fermor. And Tanner Boyd is just telling his team, calm it down. Calm it down. Uh, sausages or rissoles? Okay, is there bread and barbecue sauce? If there's bread and barbecue sauce, I'm always choosing the dirty, the dirty sausage on a piece of bread. Otherwise, just on their own, I would have to choose a Rissol as AJ Brimson goes straight through. Where's the support? There it is from Kieran Foran. Gets those old legs pumping. Back inside to Tanner Boyd and the Titans have taken the lead back again. Oh, this topsy-turvy game continues and the Titans have reclaimed the lead. Or at least they're about to. Unless Tanner Boyd completely cocks this kick up, they're about to reclaim the lead. Twenty-eight points all. This game is going to go down to the wire. A little piece of AJ Brimson magic, and poor old Kieran Forward. He was trying to get those old legs pumping. Richard Hetter says rissoles and mashed potatoes and veggies sounds nice. Anime and more, who do you think will win, Broncos or Raiders? I think the Broncos are going to win by about 50 or 60. The Broncos are going to put on a massive score tonight. Paul Motuno, golden point, anyone? Huh? Golden point? A golden point again. Could the Titans possibly live through another golden point match? Poor old Dez. Poor old Desi, if he has to sit through another golden point. From right beside the post, Tanner Boyd makes it 30 points to 28. There's Big Tino in the stands watching on. The Titans lead again. I still think Manly will win this game. They've got to stop with the errors, though. They've got to tidy up their own play. As James, uh, Spanner James, rightfully pointed out earlier, I mean, pretty much, if not all, of the Titans' tries have been on the back of Manly mistakes. If they can stop presenting the errors, they'll win the game in the end quite comfortably. They've just let these errors slip into the game and it's keeping the Titans in it. Back underway we go. But with, with 26 minutes to go, unless Manly, for whatever reason, completely hit the panic button and they don't need to... Oh, and now speaking of errors, Chris Randall with no pressure on him whatsoever. Takes a look at look up and sees the oncoming defense and oh that's a, a an unforced error if there ever was one. And here's a chance now for Manly to just calm things down. Invited straight back into the contest. It's 
Scrum down, 15 out. Here they go. Right hand side, Croker finds Cherry Evans. Flat pass to Ruben Garrick. Surprised it wasn't call, called. Jake Travojevic puts the head down in midfield, just settles play down. Five out from the line, tackle two. They go right, crash ball to Ethan Bullymore, and that's a try for Manly. Bullymore will score. Manly reclaim the lead. This seesaw battle continues. Hey, at least if Ruben Garrick doesn't score, sports four, we get cash back, you know? Bonus bet back. If Manly win, of course, I mean. As it stands right now. Right in this position, Manly ahead. Manly win. We got Coca-Cola. If Ruben Garrick doesn't manage to get over, bonus bet back. So we're all good. <laughs> James says, uh, too many games on a Saturday. Bring back four games on a Sunday. Oh, no. No, I, co I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I'd say less games on Sunday, please. For me, personally, for me, personally, my lifestyle, please, less games on a Sunday because Sundays, I'm often just ruined. <laughs> when you think about Thursday, I've already done Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Quite often, a night out on Saturday night, I am ruined on Sundays. Yeah, please don't give me more to do on Sundays. Are we excited for Anzac Day? Big Anzac Day clash. Uh, um, I'm on holidays as well. It's going to be cool. I'm on holidays for the next two weeks. 34 points to 30. Room and Garrick with the successful conversion. Manly. Back in the lead. Back on top. Twenty-three and a half minutes to go. Bullymore, the try scorer. There's still so long left in this game. That's hard to believe. I tell you what, if you had overs in this game, you'd be laughing. Sixty-four points already. There's twenty-three minutes left. There is definitely more points left in this game. Fifth and last, 40 out. Cherry Evans puts it high. It's a great kick chase. Manly are up and take it. Saab gets the ball back inside. And Ola Kuatu dives over, but I think it's been knocked on. I think it's been lost forward. This will be Titans ball. Yes, indeed it was. Ola Kuatu was over for a double. But it was touched by Ruben Garrick. Saab got this ball back in. Oh, if only Garrick could have collected that. J <clears throat> Junior, lads, ahoy there, mate. Oh, speaking of around the grounds, James. Around the grounds, super rugby. 78 minutes gone. The Blues, 46. The Brumbies, 7. Uh, the Reds, 31-0 over the Highlanders yesterday. That's huge. That's a massive win. Upcoming match, Broncos versus Raiders. Who do you think is winning tonight? I think the Broncos will win by at least at least 20 points on a uh, rather hapless Raiders team who haven't... The Raiders haven't really been challenged yet against anybody good. So they're about to go on a six or seven match losing streak, Ricky's Green Goblins. They've had a bit of a gift draw to start the year. Uh, they're in for a bit of a reality check. 34-30 in this incredibly high-scoring, seesawing game. Neil Clarkson, welcome back. Malcolm says, can't wait to take on this Titans team in a couple of weeks. 
James says narrow Raiders win tonight. Who's um who's taken on the Titans in a couple of weeks? As Manly put the ball high, Bremson takes it at the back for the Titans. Who's got the Titans in a couple of weeks? Let's have a look. Round eight, round nine, that would be. Round eight, round nine. Who's got the Titans? Oh, the Storm. Okay. The Warriors. Warriors Storm. Uh, Warriors Titans. I mean, when's that game? It must be next week. All right, so round eight. Yeah, round eight. Warriors Titans next week. Fifth and last here for the Titans this week against Manly. Tommy Turbo takes it on the full. Swivels, pivots, is caught. Beats the tackler. Offloads to Saab. Saab gets wrapped up. From dummy half, Cherry, Ev Cherry Evans puts the fend on. Suckers in the penalty. Ah, the old your mum jokes, eh? Oh, that was... See, because I didn't find them funny. I was the I was the member of my friendship circle that was just like when when your mum jokes became the thing to do. I was just like these are not funny. Like ah, oh, <laughs> what are you getting up to this weekend, your mum? Okay, um, but no, seriously, what are, what are you doing this weekend, your mum? <laughs> it was a very painful period. No, they're, they're really not funny, Lucas. They're really not funny at all. Glenn Woods, ahoy there. Blues smashed the Brumbies indeed. Quentin Paul, money on Manly for the win. 18 and a half minutes to go. Four points the difference. It's going to be a Titans scrum. Five short of the halfway line. And the other one? The other one? What's the other one? I'm assuming you know the other one, James. The, the exact same style of joke. But the other one that, that, that I hated that came into fashion... Oh, the Titans spill it on tackle one. Woodsy dives on the loose ball. They can't get a good firm grip on the balls tonight, the Titans. That's what she said. That's the other one. Your mum and that's what she said. Oh, the bane of comedy existence, those two gags. Through the hands now, Trebojevic to Tommy Turbo. Very similar. Um, they're both in a very similar style, both with very similar results to me. But my circle of bloody friends, they loved it, didn't they? So that's all I heard. Brooks puts the step on. Inside ball to Tommy T. He's wrapped up fifth and last. Cherry Evans, cross field kick. Looking for Saab. It's over his head. How hard it is to kick a ball over the top of Jason Saab's head. Viking Naxx, ahoy. Are you nervous about tonight, Viking? First real test for the for the Raiders. Oh, okay. No, I do. All right. Okay. I do love. I do love those mum jokes. Those sorts of mum jokes are great. You know the old Fresh Prince of Bel Air. 
uh, that uh, that late nineties comedy. Your mama so blah blah blah. Love those mum jokes. Those are great. Yeah, let let's make a clear distinction between the your mum so fat jokes and just the the random your mum response jokes. Very clear distinction between the two. The Titans chip and chase. Kelly knocks it on. They're gonna captain challenge. They do have a challenge left. The Titans, so it's probably worth a shot. In all honesty. Well, that's why I wear them. <laughs> Your mum's so fat, she wears a bandana to stop the hunger sweats. That's why as soon as the streams end and I know that it's time for me to eat, the first thing that comes off, the bandana goes flying across the room. I'm like, sweat away because you're about to be fed. What are they challenging here, the Titans? A knock-on? Well, it's clearly a knock-on. That can't be... They're hoping that there's a penalty in here somewhere is what's happening. I think that's what's happening. The Titans are just hoping that Ruben Garrick has, uh, has made a play at Brian Kelly here without the ball because surely they can't possibly be challenging the knock-on call. It's the most blatant knock-on you'll ever see. They're hoping that this is going to be ruled an early tackle from uh, Ruben Garrick and that they get a penalty. And it was indeed hope against hope. Challenge unsuccessful. Lucas Uploads says, can I see your hair? Certainly. There you go. Scrum down here for Manly. 15 out from their own line. Still 15 minutes to go. We only really need Ruben Garrick. Uh, Gamer Mel needs Ruben Garrick as well. We need Ruben Garrick. The manly win is going to take care of itself. We need Garrick. Turbo, the flat pass to Kohler. It's called forward, as a matter of fact, but they were through there, manly, on tackle two. The pass from Tommy Turbo has been deemed forward. And it probably was, in fairness. Lucas is assuming you're bald. Really? But I've had hair the whole time I've been doing the channel. I just used to have a mohawk, that's all. <laughs> Wilma says, your mum is so fat when she got on the scale, it said, I need your weight, not your phone number. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I feel like that one that one would easily find its place on the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Penalty here to the Titans. Thirteen and a half minutes to go. Michelle wants to know if the rain will hamper the Broncos. Oh, it might hamper the scoreline, but I don't think it's going to hamper the result at all. Although, okay, all right, potentially. Fogarty is a better kicker than anything the Broncos have got at the moment without Reynolds. So maybe. Oh, hang on. I've just got a text message from the old Panther. The old Panthers in at Suncorp Stadium just sent me a photo from his, his seats up in the grandstand.
Oh no, it's a video. No, he didn't bail. He's he's there. I think he's undercover. I mean, under the cover of the stands, not like he went in disguise. Um, obviously. The Titans on the attack here, looking to reclaim the lead. I think a McDonald's hairline is, is the M-shaped one, yes? Where it's receding. It's sort of receding around here. And, it, and so if you look at it, it kind of looks like an M. Your mum is so fat and old. Oh, and old as well. <laughs> uh, God said, when God said, let there be light, he asked your mother to move out of the way. <laughs> uh, um, what about the hairstyle of, um, of old mate from Rocky Horror Picture Show? I've seen a few people have those over the day. Over the, over the, over the day, over the years. 11 minutes to go in this game. Titans have the ball back. Failing at icing this game at the moment. Noah Valencia. Ahoy there. What did I come back to? I don't know. When did you leave? When did you leave? And what were, what were you expecting when you came back, I suppose? to help me better answer that question. Down the short side they go. The Titans with 10 and a half remaining. <laughs> you, came, you came back to me making fun of your mum. No, there's mum jokes in the chat room. I'm just repeating them. I'm not making fun of anybody's mum. Glenn Woods says, saw on Facebook shorts a haircut where they made a mohawk, then did an actual painting on each side. Yes, you know, I've considered, well, actually, I might have a photo. I didn't get a painting. I won't look for it because it'll take me too long to find it. But yeah, I used to get the mohawk and there would be like uh, tiger stripes around the sides and the back. Yeah. We didn't go as far as doing a portrait. Ten minutes left in this game. Manly have the ball back, but the Titans, they're not going away. They've refused to go away all match. Paseca takes a tackle five. 40 metres out from their own line. Manly territory huds come by. Cherry Evans puts the kick away. Taken on the full at the back by Fafita. Nine and a half minutes. Golden point is not out of the realms of possibility. Mr. Ed's dead says uh, your ex... Had a, had a mohawk and uh, FCK. Uh, I'm, I'm only going to assume that there was another letter in there somewhere. Um, tattooed on the side of her head. <laughs> she would cover it with her hair down. And the Titans look to spread it wide to the left. Manly number up on defense and force the mistake. Every time James screams at me in the chat room, I, kn I know that I've obviously missed something. Oh, he wants me, I think you want, he really wants me to read this one out. I did see it before, actually, but then something happened in the game. It is a funny one. It's a little bit more modern, this one. It's like an updated one, a more updated one. Your mama is so fat that Dora can't even explore her. Shut up, Hamish. No one asked you. <laughs> Has it been raining, Hamish? I'm in the studio, so I don't know. Did we get that rain that was supposed to happen in our area? Boy, did you, hey, hey, Bish. Did you, um, did you hear and see the fireworks the other night? 
Uh, when was it? When I say the other night, it was probably like a week ago. But down from uh, down from the uh, down from the um, uh, what would you call that? What's that area down there? Uh, Gould Adams Park region. Down the Gould Adams Park region. Is this a try for Manly? Okay, I need to shut up and and focus on the game. Holy moly, Olakuatu, has he bagged another one? No, this one's been sent up as no try as well. Manly are over the line. Oh, they're offside there, Manly. The chasers are offside. Oh, they've been cleared as onside. Okay, the chasers have been cleared as onside. We're all good. Here's where we need to look. Is it lost forward from Manly? Yes, it is. This will be no try. Jason Saab is knocked on. And Gold Coast, they're still in it. Mr. Ed's dead says, your mama's so fat. Tomb Raider had years to explore her folds. That's terrible. I mean, that's so mean, but it's funny. Um, your mama is so fat, her belly button gets home 15 minutes before she does. <laughs> oh, Christ, I like that one. I like that one. That's good. <laughs> oh Christ. Oh, I really liked that one. That was good. <laughs> oh, that was a great one. Um, okay. Gold Coast. <laughs> uh <laughs> Gold Coast have lost the ball. Six minutes to go. Manly on the attack. 15 out. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Tackle three. 10 meters out from the line. Jake Trebojevic in midfield to Paseca. Manly. They'd go a long way to win, win this game here. DJ Shaq, wouldn't they, if they score a try? Out to the left, there's Brooks inside. On the inside line, Corey Waddell. Fifth and last. They stay on the short side. Brooks to Cola. Cola puts the kick in. It's been lost forward by Titans. Lost forward by Manly. Double knock on. Manly ball. Full set of six incoming. Still a chance to ice this game. James says, your, your mama is so fat. I took a picture of her last Christmas and it's still printing. Oh, King Jeffy Joffa's on report. For the Titans. Um, I'm, I'm, it's going to take a bit to, to beat that last one, James. It's going to take a lot to beat that last one. That was so good. Four and a half minutes to go. Robert M says, Carl Webb had a nice haircut when he had the, the Queensland logo on the side of his hairline. <laughs> Jerry Evans inside ball two. Jake Trebojevic. Four and a half to go. Manly leading by four. This is their chance. 
to seal this match. They've got numbers to the right. Cherry Evans gets all tangled up there. A waste of a tackle. They stay on that right-hand edge. Crash ball for Tommy Turbo, and he scores the try. It's called forward. Oh, no. Come on. All right, I'm not so sure about that one. It's called a forward pass. Let's have a look. Wow. The replay is on an angle. Couldn't quite see. Wow. You don't very often see those called. What was that all about? Even Big Tino's having a laugh about that on the sideline. Yeah, that's a bit of a bollocks call, that one. I'm not going to lie. That was a bit of a bollocks call. Titans still in it. I'm raising some serious questions about that forward pass call. Those get let go all the time. I mean, whether it was forward or not. Through the hands now, the Titans, they've been given a lifeline by the referee here. They need to take it with three minutes to go. We need Manly to win so that we get the bonus bet back on that multi. Now that was for that was more forward than the, the pass for the try that got called forward. On tackle three there for the Titans. That was more forward than the one that was called. Fifth and last now, Titans just over halfway. This is a huge moment in the game on the back of the that refereeing call. Saab loses it. It's been touched by Cherry Evans. This should be a penalty, Gold Coast. No, it's been knocked on first by the Titans. Well, that was lucky. That was actually very lucky. It was off the Titans. That's probably why Cherry Evans played at it too. Cherry Evans in a much, much better position than I am to make the call on who touched that. It seemed weird that he did play at it because it would have been a penalty Titans. But it was off the Titans player. Cherry Evans played at the ball. Manly scrum, 10 out from their own line. Two minutes to go. You, you would pretty much think they just have to get through this set, Manly. The, there'll be a couple of tackles, at least, at the back end of this incoming for the Titans. But realistically, it should be it should be all over. It should be all over. Red Rover, that was a try. A forward pass was called. Kept the Titans in the game. Fifth and last. Okay, Cherry Evans puts the kick in behind. Sits up for the Titans. Fafita's got it. Jojo Fafita runs across field. He's brought down. Titans, 10 out from their own line. A full set of six now. A full set of six. A minute 15 to go for the Titans to try and steal this one. Tackle two. They're out to the 20. Down the short side they go. Big defense needed here from Manly. One more set is what they've got to be thinking. Just one more set. No, no, they don't even have to do that because a very simple mistake at the back. Was that King Jolly Joffa? Or Joffy Jolla, Jolly Joffa? A very simple spilt ball. Was it the number 10? I feel like it was the number 10 for the Titans, King Jaffe Joffa. And this will surely be it for Manly. They can run down this last 23 seconds. And again, the Titans, they're getting closer and closer, aren't they? That first win is inbound. Please don't tell me that the first win happens against the Warriors next week. Three, two, one, and a zero. And again, so close for the Titans, yet so far. And let's put a lock on Manly to win on the same game multi. Two out of the three.
hey, two out of three ain't bad because that means if you did your betting correctly, bonus bet cash back. Bonus bet cash back. We can use that for the next game. Speaking of the next game, do need to set up for it. Broncos versus the Raiders. Don't go anywhere, Wasted World of Sports. We are coming back at you right after this. Broncos, Raiders. Coming up in the next game. Two out of the three legs. Not bad at all. Quentin Paul. Nice win, Manly. Cash out for you. Good job. Good job. Ollie is the best. to Hoy. All right. Waste to World of Sports. Coming up after this one, Broncos, Raiders, stay with us. This, this stream right here is going to stay active. We're not going anywhere. I'm just going to set up. Stop shouting at me, James. I'll see them eventually. Um, he's so excited about the, the mama so fat jokes in the chat room. He's posting them all and he's like, Dan, read it. Read it, for God's sake. I want to see you laugh. He got me a good one. Oh, hey, Jack, could you please send me that one that I really, really cracked up at on the Discord? I can't forget that one. That was hilarious. But I've already forgotten it. Um, uh, your mum is so fat that when she comes home, her belly is 15 minutes before the rest of her or something. Send me that one on Discord, please so that I remember it better than how I just recited it. And I'm going to set up for this next game. Broncos, Raiders, come in. That's the one. Ah, your mum is so fat, her belly button gets home 15 minutes before she does. <gasps> oh, that's a good one. All right, Waste World Sports, this stream is going to stay active. We'll be right back for the Brisbane Broncos, Canberra Raiders.
world of sports, eh? Oh, he's copped a head right to the nuts. Tedesco's butt crack. Ahoy! He's nearly taken security's head off. I have no idea what the wasted world of sports is. There we go, we're all done. Hey, so I was just thinking the Broncos game coming up. Hang on, I'll turn that down so you can hear me. I was just thinking Broncos game coming up, right? Uh, now, if anyone's been to a Broncos game at Lang Park or Suncorp Stadium or uh, where is it they used to play, they they moved they moved from Suncorp, uh, Lang Park for a while over to uh, QE2, QE2 Stadium. That's the place. So Lang Park... QE2 Stadium, Suncorp Stadium, Broncos games. If you've ever been to one live, remember that little jingle they used to play every time the Broncos would score a try? I was thinking about that the other day. Do they still do that? I'll have to ask the old Panther. He's there tonight. Um... Oh. Right, enough now. Yeah, uh, I'll have to ask the old Panther. He's there tonight. But remember that? The, the old jingle that used to play? That's not the jingle, no. That was just accidental. Imagine if they did, though. I probably would have been a Broncos fan from, from way back. Pretty much ever since I started drinking, I would have been a fan of the Broncos if that was their try-scoring jingle. All right, I'm going to play it, and let's see if we get copyrighted. Let's see if the Broncos are so vindictive. Are the Broncos as vindictive as, uh, as Steel Panther? I'm pretty sure it exists on, on YouTube as a searchable thing. Now, let's see if if you remember what I'm talking about. I'm I'm fairly certain I'm fairly certain it's something that they kept for all this time. And every time they Do would it. score a try. Every time they would score a try. Um Oh, they're coming out on the field. We might not have time for it. I might have to find it at half time. That's not it. That's not it at all. Jeez, I had this found just the other day. And I was like, yeah, that, rem that reminds me. They used to play this every time. Hang on. Oh, that's the one. They used to play this every goddamn time they would score a try. They play it still. Every time they'd score a try. It, it is actually what made me hate the Broncos because there's photographic evidence. There is actually photographic evidence of little Dan in his Broncos jersey was a fan. Little Dan, living in Brisbane, used to be a fan of the Broncos. I'm pretty sure it was that song that probably did it to me. <laughs> Ready to get underway in this one. Anyways, Melissa's Freedom, ahoy there. A Broncos fan. It is pelting down, isn't it? At Suncorp Stadium. Lots of rain around. And we're underway. The final game of the evening. Broncos, Raiders. I've gone Broncos by plenty. Let's see how it plays out. We've got Corey Oates. 
We've got Corn on the Cobo. And we've got uh, Chevy Chase Stewart. Anytime try scorers in the Sports Vault AU. Same game multi. All right, I've lost my team sheet. Jesus sage Christ. The kick in, taken on the full at the back by Oates. I've got to get my team sheet up. Otherwise, I'm going to be even worse at knowing who's who than I, than I am bloody normally. What have I actually done here? Oh, what a nightmare start to this game for me. Trying to figure out what I've actually done. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. Now that the rain is around, it is a big disadvantage for the Broncos without Adam Reynolds because Fogarty is a very underrated and very underappreciated kicker. So, being down Adam Reynolds in the wet weather is actually quite huge. That is quite a big thing. All right. I think I've got myself sorted out now. Through the hands here, Ricky's Green Goblins down the left-hand edge. That's some expansive play for the conditions. All right, Game of Mel's gone. Cobbo, Walsh, Oates, Mam, Stags, and Arthurs. Jeez, how many try scorers do you want, Game of Mel? For crying out loud, Ollie is the best. Says uh, my girlfriend Jacayla and I are going to Australia one day. We would like to meet you in real life. Let's make it happen, huh? If you travel to Queensland, let us know. We'll come out and party. Fifth and last still. Beware the second kick. Fogarty puts it into the end goal. Stags is back there. But this is a frantic start for the Raiders. Oh, God. Maybe they actually are the real deal this season. Ricky's Green Goblins. Anyway, it's only three minutes into this game. We'll see how it goes. Have a drink of Coke. You guys can have a drink of Coke. I'll have a drink of Coke with a whole lot of other stuff in it. That's perfectly fine, that is. Raiders on the attack. They've started well. I've been talking about this game as, as a real tester for the Raiders. They've had it easy so far, but are they the real deal? We'll see. That was scrappy. Easily defended by the Broncos. Paul Johang, go the Broncos, he says. Kathleen McKenzie says Walshie can just turn the game on its head for good or bad, right, Kathleen? Because he's either going to score a runaway length of the field try or he's going to spill the ball five out from his own line uncontested. This ball is trapped by the Broncos. The inside ball to Madden. Madden nearly goes through. Well defended by Fogarty on his opposite number. Walsh out to Cobbo. Corn on the cob. Puts the step on. He's wrapped up. This game has been crazy. The first four and a half minutes. Played at a frantic pace. Now Walsh up in the line, pushes the pass like Walsh usually does and straight into the hands of the Raiders. And this is just what we're talking about, isn't it? Kathleen, with Reese Walsh, it's rocks or diamonds, isn't it? It's rocks or diamonds. He either pulls off a spectacular play or it's just a plate full of piss like that was. Pushing the offload completely unnecessarily straight into the arms of the opposition. It's rocks or diamonds with that kid. 
But, you know, as they say, he's still young, he's still learning. That's the sort of play why I say Kalen Ponga needs to be the fullback for State of Origin. Because that sort of play in State of Origin is going to cost you games. You can get away with it at club level. But that's going to cost you games at Origin. Bogarty to the line. Flat pass and absolutely creamed in the tackle. Who was that there? I couldn't see a number. But Fogarty again, inside ball to Smithies. Intercept from Oates. No, he's lost it forward. He couldn't get it. Corey Oates. Oh, we would have seen those old legs pumping all the way up the field. Sports Fault AU with some rapid fire questions. Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Sprite or 7 Up? Ooh. Geez, 7 Up's hard to find. Honestly, 7 Up's hard to find where I live at the moment. It's all Sprite, but yeah, I, I really don't mind, I suppose. Sprite's got a really weird aftertaste, I find. So I would drink 7 Up if I could find it. Xbox or PlayStation? PlayStation. Ollie is the best, says, we will all have a party. What would you like to do? Party. Drink. Pretty much all I do. Come up to Queensland, visit the studio. Jump on a live stream if you like. Call one of the games. Sports Fort AU says burgers or pizzas. Oh, do I have to choose? Can I have both? Vodka or tequila? Yeah, vo vodka really messes me up. So I'll have the vodka. Jaffa Kennedy, ahoy! Flat pass there from Papa. Canberra looking good. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Canberra looking decent here tonight. Fogarty puts the kick high. They've let it bounce here, the Broncos. That's dangerous. And over the sideline it goes. Total miscommunication there between Walsh and who's that over on the wing? Arthurs. Richard Hedda says, stop talking about food. I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair enough. We've got to get through... Um, 70 more minutes of footy before I can think about grabbing a feed. Dangerous there to let the ball bounce. 72% possession here to the, uh, to the Raiders. They've started extremely well. And I tell you what, if the Raiders pull through this game, oh no, a mistake from the... From the Broncos, Corey Jensen, sloppy play the ball. I'm starting to think that I might have jinxed the Broncos here. Just like I jinxed the Eels the other night. Um, <laughs> under normal circumstances, sports faults. Under normal circumstances, I would say KFC, but if you've ever had the KFC in my area, you would understand completely why I say Maccas. <laughs> just because, we, like, we've got so... We've just got an abundance of way better burger joints around the area. Stuart... On to Timiko. Timiko keeps the ball alive. Out to Schiller. They're 10 out from the line here, the Raiders. It's been dominant so far from Ricky's Green Goblins. Tarpany beats one. Tarpany beats two. They drag him down by the collar. 
Two meters out, fifth and last. Short side play, the kick into the end goal is a try for the Raiders. Hudson Young is over. And the Raiders, 10 minutes of pure domination, finally leads to points. They have started this game so well. If they win this game tonight, I am more than willing to admit that I was wrong. Oh, he's lost it. He's lost it. Hudson Young's lost it. Wait a minute. This one's not confirmed yet. This try is not confirmed yet. He's lost the ball. It's nil all still. Forget about it. I was about to say it. No, I was not about to say it. The Raiders are terrible. Speaking of terrible, I uh, can't help but notice who's in charge of this match. Hudson Young has lost it. That is a big let off. It remains nil all. Oh. And the Broncos supporters breathe a sigh of relief. Neil Clarkson says, hope this one goes more to script for me. Straightforward one-sided win for Broncos. Please. Notice this says George Gregan better than Andrew Johns. Get out. Get right out. Straight out right now, sir. <laughs> oh, the Broncos come up with another mistake and now Tarpany busts up field. The Broncos handling in the conditions comparatively atrocious. They're not playing wet weather footy at the moment. Well, neither team is. It's just the Raiders are doing it better. I was, I was about to shush DJ Shaq. Shh. Nobody heard it. It didn't happen. No, I've got to say, George, Georgie Porgy, Georgie Porgy Gregan, he was a quality player, wasn't he? He's through the hands now, the Raiders again. Sebastian Chris goes close. They're only five meters out from the line here on tackle four. From dummy half goes Savage. Wrong option, mate. Wrong. Now, George, George Gregan was pretty good, but come on, Andrew Johns, the immortal. Bogarty with the crossfield kick. It's a little bit too heavy, and it's taken by Oates in the end goal. Seven tackle set for the Broncos. Corey Oates there to save the day. Christian Kupkovich, ahoy there. The house says wearing masks makes me feel like George Floyd. Fair enough. Around the grounds with DJ Shaq, the Crusaders are on the board. Leading five points to nil over the Western Force. Kick to come, DJ Shaq. It's pouring down in New Zealand, apparently. Up the Waz, straight through a gap goes Reese Walsh. Support inside, support outside. But he puts the step on, goes on his own and scores the try. The let off up the other end of the field turns into points for the Broncos down the other end. Four points to nil. Kick to come. Ah, oh, Reese Walsh has got a gusher. He's bleeding out of somewhere. Is it his nose or is it his mouth? Or is he bleeding out of that, that piss poor excuse of a mustache that he's trying to grow? I can't tell. The Canberra Raiders guilty of rushing up in defense there. And through it goes. Walsh might have copped a high shot here. I think it was, yes. He's copped it around the face from Chevy Stewart. DJ Shaq says, I honestly just wouldn't play Walsh in origin. I don't think he's fully healthy. 
Not the reasons that I wouldn't play him in Origin, DJ Shaq, but... Um... I wouldn't play him in Origin because of the defensive liability, but... But yeah, he's... Uh... Yeah, he's an interesting one. He's not the finished product yet, of course. That's what people keep coming back to when they, when they think I'm just needlessly shitting on him. Oh, but he's only young. He's still developing. Yes, I get that. I completely understand that. But let's not talk about him like he's up here when he's still down here. That's all I'm saying. He's still got a long way to go, and I wouldn't have him in, in Origin just yet. Caitlin Pong has done the hard yards and earned the right to be there. Conversion from out wide. Successful, and it's six points to nil. Who's, who's injured in the Broncos? Reynolds. Yeah, Reynolds is out. Haas is still out. Um, yeah, the Broncos have got quite a few out at the moment. Reynolds and Haas are obviously the big name players that are out. But um, Broncos are missing quite a few at the moment. Six points to nil, Broncos leading. Sports Fault AU says, why do the Broncos bring out a random horse every home game? Well, it's not really random because, I mean, a Bronco is a horse, essentially. A big horse. It, <laughs> my question is, <laughs> my question is, why do the Raiders home games have that stupid Viking clap? I mean, I understand the connection, Raiders, Vikings. It's just stupid. I'll take the horse going around the field a hundred times over the stupid Viking clap that the Raiders do. Cleary is out. Yes, Cleary's out for the Panthers until at least next week. Broncos put it high. Stewart loses it behind him, and the Raiders just get there to kick the ball dead. This is going to be a goal line dropout. Great work there from the Broncos defenders, forcing the mistake on young Chevy Chase Stewart. Taking the ball, and then Ezra Mam absolutely dry humps him into the ground, forces the mistake. What a hit from Ezra. The ball spills free. James Schiller gets across and saves the day, I'm pretty sure. Oh, Cobbo. Corn on the Cobbo. He grounded it, but he grounded it onto the boot of Schiller. That was so close to a try. That was so close to a lock on the multi. Six points to nil it remains, but I, I dare say, well, they're either going to call this a knock-on or they're going to call this a, uh, a dead ball from Raiders and goal line dropout. Excuse me. All right, now, <laughs> now, what was all that commotion about, eh? What's going on out there? You're seeing, you're seeing things move around in the dark out there, eh? It's all right. If they're, if they're out there, they can't hurt us. Oh, we've got a... Uh, A restart, 20 out for, for the Raiders. <laughs> Michelle says, I hope all the emos at Bring Me the Horizon used waterproof mascara tonight as the Raiders come up with a dropped ball on tackle one. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Lyrics, ahoy, mate. 
Let's go, Bronx. Oh, that is a big mistake. Danny Levi, a dummy half. It's on at River Stage. I don't doubt it. Yeah. I went to a uh, Bring Me the Horizon gig at River Stage quite a many, many years ago now. But the funny thing is, it was it was Bring Me the Horizon's show. Like they were the headline act. But there was uh, there was Atreyu and Avenged Sevenfold were on the support bill. I went home before Bring Me the Horizon came out. I was only there for Atreyu. I, I, funnily enough, I happen to be wearing an Atreyu shirt right now, randomly, as I tell this story. Yes, Atreyu and Avenged Sevenfold were the support acts, and I buggered off home before Bring Me the Horizon even got on stage. Walsh to Stags. Stags almost goes through. Tackle four. Broncos on the attack again. 15 out. Ma'am. Out wide to Cobbo. Cobbo tries to put the fend on. Good defense from Schiller. And the Raiders hold on. Fifth and last. Trailing by six. Bad service there to Ma'am. Puts the crossfield kick in. It's tapped back for the Broncos. And here's a try for Jordan Ricky. They lead 10 points to nail the Broncos. What did I tell you? It's going to be an absolute spanking here tonight at Fortress Suncorp. Broncos lead 10 nil. kick to come. What did I tell you? The Raiders are terrible, is what I told you. It's what I've been telling you all season long. The Raiders are terrible. And we're finally seeing it tonight. They've had it easy, Ricky's Green Goblins. They've had an easy draw the first six rounds. They're about to go on a seven-match losing streak, and it starts here tonight. They're going to cop an absolute spanking at Suncorp Stadium by the Broncos. Ten points to nil, kick to come. Bring on the assault. Wow, this feels weird. This is the strangest feeling in the world to be so openly supporting the Broncos as Reese Walsh puts the conversion over. Give me five bucks, ahoy, mate. Richard Hetter said, would there be any bad language from Ricky? <laughs> Um, I feel like that's a rhetorical question, Richard, because it really doesn't need an answer. Of course there will be. Oh, he'll be fired up. And I want a camera on Ricky in the coach's box. That's what I would like right now. That'd be cool. He'll be fired up. Twenty-one minutes left in the first half. The Broncos withstood. A lot of early pressure, and they've got themselves quite a comfortable lead right now. What did I say? I said Broncos by at least 20. Let's remember that. Broncos by at least 20, I said. So let's keep an eye on how this continues to fall, unfold. Carrigan on tackle four. They're 40 out from their own line here, the Bronx. I'm even calling them the Bronx. Oh, God. All right, I need a shower after this game. Fifth and last, Madden puts it high. Stewart's under it. Oh, he's fumbled it. It's loose at the back. Ezra Mam toes through and scores. The Broncos are in again. Oh, the Oracle strikes. A demolition job is underway here at Suncorp. 16 points to nil. Kick to come. Navigator Island. Thank you so much, mate. $10 super chat. Broncos, baby. 
And with every super chat is a shot of the captain. Navigator Island. If I can get this goddamn bottle open. Captain Morgan's for you, sir. Thank you so much. Cheers. Ah, yes. A mistake at the back from young Chevy Chase Stewart. Nineteen minutes to go in the first half. The Broncos are just cruising in the wet weather here. Walsh from right in front to make it 18-0. What did I say? What did I say? It's the first real test for the Raiders. And they are, of course, failing miserably. As I anticipate it. You've got to feel sorry for, for Chevy Stewart. Young fella. Oh, well, that's a very delayed thing. Yes. Navigator Island with the uh, $10 super chat. Thank you. Cheers once again. Navigator Island. Penalty Broncos. T-shirts now available. Oh, that's the wrong one. Go away. Go away. There we go. Oh, God. I took it off the screen. Penalty Broncos. T-shirts now available from poptoyourdrop.com.au, the official merchandise home of the Waste of Water Sports. I'm a little bit worried, Sports Vault, about our same game multi. <laughs> really worried because Stuart, Chevy Chase Stuart seems really off the game tonight. He could be the uh, faulty leg in this multi but if we get the other two it's all good if we get the other two cash back so it's all good Stuart who have they got on the bench because Stuart might not even play the second half Nate from We Are Family says Broncos receive like the least penalties most year I don't know what sport Nate's watching <laughs> But the sport that I watch, the Broncos, especially at Suncorp, get very heavily favoured with the penalties, hence the T-shirt. But hey, tonight, that's a good thing. Tonight, I'm on your side. I want all the penalties to go the Broncos' way tonight. Because I've gone Broncos 20 plus. It's the Raiders with the ball, though, up over halfway. Good run from Timiko. We do need uh, Chevy Stewart, though. I'm a bit concerned about that one. Very concerned about that one, the way that this game started. But it's a long game, sports for Long game, plenty of time. Chevy can uh, ease on into his work, and maybe it stops raining for the second half. So who knows? He might come into it. Down the left-hand edge, go. The Raiders, Sebastian Chris. Look at the sea of Broncos defenders there to bring him down. Fifth and last. They're a couple of meters out from the line. Oh, it's a terrible service. And it's gone to Tarpany on the fifth and last. Oh, the Raiders. They have just fallen to pieces here. It's gone to Tarpany on the fifth and last for a kicking option. Ricky Stewart is going to be pulling his hair out up in the coach's box. As the Broncos are set to unleash the interchange. Here comes Xavier Willison onto the field. Carrigan on to Willison, and there's Willison's first run. Eats up 10 meters, up over halfway. Madden puts the kick in. It's over the head of Stewart. Stewart lets it bounce. He looks up. 
The Broncos swarm at him. He does well to get back in the field of play. But now the Broncos are there in numbers. And they drag him back into the end goal. Oh, it is a nightmare of epic proportions here at Suncorp for Chevy Chase Stewart. He is having a night that he will really want to forget as soon as possible. He had such a good debut. But it was only against the Titans, wasn't it? In fairness. Short restart here for the Raiders. Tap backwards and there to claim it. Who is that? I can't see a number. Oh, it's Ethan Strange. Well, one of the Raiders' best all season long so far. Ethan Strange is there to secure the loose ball. The short dropout has worked wonders here for the Raiders. What a let off. Fourteen minutes to go in the first half. Eighteen points to nil. I've gone Broncos twenty plus. So things are looking good for me at the moment. Up over halfway. Fogarty on fifth and last. Off the side of the boot. It's a shocker. An absolute shocker. But in the wet weather, who knows? But Corey Oates. And he beats two defenders, Oates. No, no, Michelle, uh, we're talking about Chevy Stewart, the fullback for the Raiders. It's only his second game, and it's been a nightmare so far. We're not talking about Ricky. Ricky's job's safe for as long as he wants it. He's, uh, he's uh, Raiders royalty, is Ricky. Carrigan, flat pass there to Hetherington. The poor kid has had such a nightmare at the back i feel so bad for him walters puts the grubber kick in it sits up and billy walters scores it's 24 nil incoming it's 22 at the moment but the kick to come from right on the post and billy walters makes daddy proud with that little play from dummy half puts the grubber kick through and scores the try there's still 12 and a half minutes to go until half time Oh, I told you. Look at the smile on Dad's face there up in the coach's box. He's like, that's my boy. That's my boy. 22-0 kick to come. The Broncos are carving up here tonight. Twenty two nil kick to come. Ha <laughs> ha. 12 minutes to go. Oh, Navigator Island with another $10 super chat. And that means another shot of the captains. Eleven and a half minutes to go. 22 nil kick to come to Navigator Island. Cheers. Billy Walters, a great individual effort there. I just love that uh, if anyone's wondering why I'm so pro Bronco tonight, it's because I've been talking all season about how the Raiders are not the real deal. It was scaring me for the first 10 minutes because that's, it was starting to look like they actually, in fact, were the real deal. But no, now... Order has been restored. And uh, an understrength Broncos team, understrength t-shirts, Waste to World of Sports understrength t-shirts, now available at pop2youdrop.com.au. The official merchandise home of the Waste to World of Sports and understrength Broncos are putting the Raiders in their place. 24-0 with 11 minutes to go in this first half. And order has been restored. We are seeing the real Canberra Raiders. Ah! We're seeing the real Canberra Raiders tonight.
24 nil in the first half. Wow. I mean, I, I said 20 plus Broncos to win by 20 plus, but I was thinking like over the course of the entire match, not that they would have that lead going into half time. Tackle four, they're back up over halfway. They're just rolling on here, the Broncos. Fifth and last, Hetherington takes the tackle. They're 30 out. Walters to Walsh, puts the kick in. Well, he sits up in the end goal. Stewart gets back into the field of play. Great job, young man. On the back of a few errors, to be able to pull that off is great work. They're still under the pump here, though. The Raiders, 10 out from their own line. But yes, let's uh, let's give credit there to Chevy Chase Stewart. He's been under the pump. He's made quite a few mistakes to make that play. And now, using their pace, Xavier Savage nearly gets on the outside, but he spills the ball. And the Broncos have it again. Zero tackle on halfway. Katoni Staggs. They're playing catch-up footy. Which, I mean, I suppose in some way they kind of have to. Carrigan loses it at the back. Ezra Mam's there to collect the loose ball. A big rumble forward there from Xavier Willison. On tackle four, they're 20 out. Carrigan in at first receiver to Hetherington. Cuts back in field towards the posts. 10 out from the line. A couple of tackles left. Madden out the back to Walsh. Walsh dummies and goes straight through and scores. It's 28-0 kick to come. Oh. It is an absolute rampage here at Fortress Suncorp. The Broncos are putting on a clinic. And Ricky's hapless green goblins on the receiving end of a rugby league lesson. Twenty eight points to nil kick to come. Yes and no, Michelle. Yes and no. Because um, if you saw the, the screen in the background, on the screens in the background, and he, he did a little celebration, in fairness, that was still over the top compared to all the other players. But on the screen in the background, he was uh, doing a dance. He was doing a little jig which was pre-recorded, by the way. I should point that out. On the screen in the background behind him was him pre-recorded for the graphics at the stadium doing a little jig that looked absolutely ridiculous. It looked like he was uh, signed up for the Wiggles. If you didn't see it, I actually recommend skipping back and checking it out. It was quite hilarious. <laughs> yeah, not, not an actual thing for him. It was just on the screen for the stadium. We just happened to see it because it was on the camera in the background. But yeah, it looked like he was auditioning for the Wiggles. It's worth seeing. If you, if you missed it, I recommend skipping back and... <laughs> and checking it out. Reese Walsh, the pink wiggle. Is there a pink wiggle already? Anyway. He can be the pink wiggle. Twenty-eight points to nil. The Broncos six and a half to go till the halftime break. 
What did I tell you? Did I or did I not say all day, all day, have I or have I not been saying that the Broncos are going to spank the Raiders tonight? Michelle said someone just called Billy Eilish, Billy Eyelash in a chat. I, fair enough. I mean, it sounds like something I would say too if I knew even who that was. AFL player or part of the part of the Lions Cats match. Sounds like something I would call one of the players on commentary, though. <laughs> Robert M says, only red, blue, yellow, and purple. Fifth and last, Raiders put it high. It's taken by Oatsy at the back. Oh, it's a girl. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Billy. Thought you're a bloke. That's what I get for gender assuming in... I mean, Billy can be a, a chick's name too, I know, depending on the spelling. Uh, she sings that song, Bad Guy. Never heard it. Never heard of hit. Never heard of it. Never heard of her. Sorry. <laughs> Fifth and last Broncos inside their own 40. Get in the kick away. Oh, that's a huge hit. What a monstrous hit. Turn around and let me see your number, sir. Who was that that just put a monster of a hit on? Poor young Chevy Chase Stewart has just been folded in half like an origami swan. Oh, that was a monstrous hit. I want to see a number. Who was that? Christ alive. What a hit. Hetherington. It was Kobe Hetherington. Holy hell. That is a monster of a hit on poor little Chevy Chase Stewart. Justin Karam, diehard Bronco. Diehard Bronx listening from Copex, East New Britain Province, PNG. To his credit, he's up and playing the ball. I mean, honestly, to his credit, he is up and playing the ball. I mean, that is an honest to his credit. He just got up and played the ball. No pissing and moaning. He just got up, played the ball, carried on. Credit to him, young Chevy Chase Stewart. But the Raiders are absolutely rattled here. Three minutes, 57 to go till the halftime break. It's been all Broncos here at Fortress Suncorp. Michelle says, I'm loving this. My stream is about 20 seconds behind you. So when you yell, I can quickly change channels. Corey Oates takes the high ball. And the Broncos have it. 10 out from their own line. Wow, okay. I was questioning whether it was raining before. Yeah, I can hear it now. It's thumping down outside. I can actually hear it on the roof of the studio. I don't need to see outside. Oh, they bobble the ball there, Jensen. Manages to hold on to it, though. Tackle four. I know you told me it was raining, but... I'm just saying I, I asked the question before because I didn't know, but I know now because I can hear it. It's absolutely thumping down. Like, like now, I don't even need to ask the question. I can hear it. Two and a half to go till the halftime break. Raiders ball. Up towards halfway they go with Timiko. Thumping down here and currently 16, what, 16 degrees? 
16 degrees Celsius. Ollie is the best, says my friend Reed. Said hi. Ahoy there, Reed. I'm going to get... Honestly, Ollie, by the, by the time... I don't know. How long should we give it? But I reckon after a certain amount of time, Ahoy is going to catch on. Your friends and yourself, they won't be saying hi anymore. Ahoy is going to catch on. I'm going to keep just drilling it. Drilling it, drilling it, drilling it. Ahoy there, Reed. Time off here. Someone's going for a HIA, I think. There's Big Papa. Oh, 17 for the Raiders. Pisami Solo. He looks like he's on a different planet at the moment, the poor fella. Off for a HIA, you go, sir. Yep. HIA. <laughs> he followed the trainer's hands up. Oh, God. I've got to timestamp that. I've got to timestamp that. I mean, it's... It's mean and hilarious all at the same time. I have to timestamp that in the stream. He's so out of it, is Pisami Solo. The trainer put his hands up to signal to the sideline for HIA. And he's so out of it that he f he's like, huh? Is this part of the test? Oh, I'm such a horrible person. <sighs> There's a nice cozy seat awaiting me in hell. Right beside Satan himself. I'm such a bad person. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> oh, wow. Robert M says, Ollie has so many friends. He normally watches a person in New Zealand stream the Union. Oh, I probably would too, honestly. I'd be, hey, I'd be streaming the Rugby Union myself, except that um, the, the NRL for whatever reason, does extreme numbers, then that's a terrible kick. Who kicked that one? That's gone so far dead. A seven tackle set incoming. Speaking of the rugby, it's been a while since we've gone around the grounds for Super Rugby Pacific. Oh, the force. Oh, no. My beloved Crusaders. My beloved Crusaders, what's going on with them this season? 32 minutes into the match, Western Force 11, Crusaders 5. What is going on with my beloved Crusaders this year? It's sad. <laughs> 29 seconds to go until the halftime break. Ah, Nichols, ahoy, mate. Through the hands. Now Ethan Strange, a standout performer for the Raiders. 10 seconds to go. Fogarty puts it high. Walsh at the back leaps up and takes it. And that will be half time. The Broncos have put on a clinic and they go into the half time break, leading 28 points to nil. Now, does anyone remember what I said? The scoreline would be in this game. I'm pretty sure I said Broncos 20 plus at least. I'll drink to that. I'll always drink to being right. It was Walsh that kicked it dead. Well, that makes sense. That makes sense. Ollie is the best says, who's a cheeky monkey? Oh, are we allowed to say that in 2024? Who's a cheek cheeky monkey out of Reed or Jonathan or my girlfriend, Jaquela? I don't really know, honestly. Although, I've got to say, I did say 30 plus, didn't I, Robert? Initially, I said 30 plus. I think he's on. I think Robert M's on to me here. I think I did say 30 plus originally, and then I downgraded it to 20 plus just to protect myself a little bit in the hopes that nobody heard me. But I think Robert M's on to me. 
<laughs> wow, 28 points to nil at half time. Even I didn't predict this. I thought the Broncos would win and win big. But I didn't think it would be like game over at half time kind of big. I really didn't. I thought that the Raiders might have still been in it at half time. Not 28 nil at half time. That's uh, unreal. Absolutely unreal, that is. Hey, hey, hey. Wow. What a performance. I mean, really, what a performance. Uh, so, yeah, who's the cheeky monkey out of Reed or Jonathan? Um, all right, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, like, okay, define cheeky monkey. Usually on, like, TV shows and movies and stuff, it's, it's, the, you've got to be wary of the Jonathans, don't you? I mean, I'm sorry, Jonathan, but. In my experiences uh, with TV and movies and, and the, the characters that are usually the cheeky ones you've got to keep an eye on, it's usually the Jonathans, isn't it? Robert M says, I reckon we'll see 50 on the Raiders. Yeah, I said 30 plus in the Manly game. Oh, damn it. You were, No one was supposed to still be here to to remember that robert you got me you got me <laughs> he got me he caught me robert m's on the ball he caught me i did say 30 but mind you 30 plus is still looking good though isn't it 50s looking good yes quentin paul 50s looking good as well jeez <sighs> Ricky, Ricky's really going to have to put the rocket up him at half time. Is it possible that they come out in the second half a completely different team? For, from the context of a, a good game, you would hope that they will. But will they? The Cuban Egg says Brisbane is my team. Fry me, come on. Fried eggs, fried eggs for dinner after the stream. It's done. I prefer poached eggs myself. That's my preference. Should I wear the vest all the time? I feel a bit um I feel a bit underdressed for the stream tonight. I'm I'm just wondering if I should rock the vest every time. The Cuban egg says I dare you to use me on the menu at a restaurant. I need, that's the sort of thing that um I need UF I need UFC in the chat room or James. I need someone that really deeply understands my sense of humor in the chat room for moments like that. All right. Ah. There we go. Ah. Halftime costume change. Hey, Michelle, you might know the answer to this. Have, um, has the Atreyu tour happened already? Or is it still coming up? I, f I think it's happened already. I think I missed it. It was actually probably last year. <laughs> it was probably actually last bloody year, wasn't it? Like late last year. Doesn't feel like that long ago, but now that I think about it, I'm like, it's well happened, hasn't it? Oh, because oh, it was a bright side. That's why I didn't go. That's why I didn't give a shit. I mean, that's why I didn't give a crap. Yeah, it was February. Okay. So it wasn't that long ago. But it was a bright side, wasn't it? Yeah, because I know there was a reason I didn't give a toss. I think it was the venue. 
Yeah, fair enough. The rain is pouring down at the Gabba. Apparently. Oh, you're at the bright side on Thursday. <laughs> Suffocation and revoca revocation. Yeah, one of my friends from Sydney, Ophelia. She went to the suffocation show at Sydney. I saw some Instagram updates. Instagram updates from her from the suffocation show front and center wherever wherever that was in in Sydney. You agreed to do merch only because then you were paid to be there and could see the band. See, that's smart. That's very smart. Suffocation are loose, lads. Really? A band with the name Suffocation are a bit loose, are they? Who'd have thought? Oh, but you had a ticket. Why did you have a ticket? You're doing merch and you still had a ticket? Oh, you okay, fair enough. 28 points to nil here at half time. The Broncos. What a performance it's been so far. Did I or did I not say? And um, hey, when I say something positive about the Broncos, you know that it must be true. When I'm on board with the Brisbane Broncos, you all should get on board as well because of how rare it is. You know that it must be true. And here we are. Broncos winning big. Richard Hedder says, that's why I didn't go to Suncorp Stadium tonight. To watch the game because of the weather. I'm really starting to feel like there's enough. I, I feel like we're we're starting to get enough mates in the chat room now. We can start thinking about doing like some sort of live show from a pub somewhere, Michelle. What do you reckon? I mean, I was supposed to be doing that. I was supposed to be doing that this two weeks that I've got off on holidays. I reckon we do like, uh, but I was going to be doing it in Sydney and Melbourne, but I reckon we actually do it in Brisbane. Sounds like there's enough Broncos and Dolphins supporters out there or Brisbane-based fans, and we don't even have to go anywhere, really. We should do it at the Sporting Globe. I reckon they'd get on board. I mean, I reckon, I reckon if we did it at the Sporting Globe, I mean, we, we could have the place filled out just with our friends. There'd be like no tickets left for people who actually want to come along. It'd just be all our mates there. We could fill that place out, I reckon. Anyway, something to discuss. Something to consider. Because I, I do feel like we're getting to that point, like quite, quite, uh, quite honestly. Live shows, be a bit of fun. All right, halftime here. I'm going to have myself a very quick break while I've still got a chance. Halftime, 28-0 Broncos. We'll be back. For all the second half action right after this.
Uh, when is Magic Round? Good question. Where's my phone? Ah, in my pocket. Okay. <laughs> Don't you hate it when... Oh, at least I'm in the house right now. The worst feeling ever is when you're like, where's my phone? But you're out somewhere. Like, oh, God, where's the phone? Where's the phone? <laughs> you put it in the opposite pocket that you normally do because you're so wasted and you're out on the town. Oh, no, it's over in this other pocket. Okay, 17th to the 19th of May. All right, so uh, maybe maybe a... Uh, oh, maybe a magic round, some sort of magic round day. What could we have? Um, oh, it's a bit soon, isn't it? Kind of soon, isn't it? bit soon to try and organize this but um what could we have we could have um something wasted water sport we, instead of magic round it'd be um magic because we, we, you know we've got a we've got a wasted we've got a wasted it up so it'd be like magic mushroom round just for example Whoops. Okay. Spillage. Spillage. Don't you don't you lick that up, Alara. That's not good for you. Oh man. When I had my <laughs> way back in the day, when I had my German Shepherd, um spilt spilt a bourbon once. And he came running over. He heard he heard the spillage. German Shepherd comes bounding on over. Licks it up off the floor, this spilt bourbon. And then, like, obviously alcohol affects dogs slightly differently than humans. It takes a little while to kick in for us, but he's licked this spillage up off the floor. And, um, yeah, if you've, if you, oh, wow, I've seen, if you've ever seen a German Shepherd drunk, his eyes bulged up, just like, what is this feeling? And this energetic, like would jump all over you sort of german shepherd was just like plop i'm just gonna have a sit down for a bit i think if that's all good with you down he went it was just like whoa it was really um yeah i mean i was as the owner of the german shepherd in question i was quite concerned seeing my dog drunk but um yeah, it it took about um 40, 40 45 minutes for him to finally get over it and was back to normal, but yeah, it was a classical sight. He was so confused. The poor dog was just like, "What is this magical thing that I've just taken off the floor?" Second half underway here anyway. The Brisbane Broncos at Fortress Suncorp putting on a clinic in the first half and leading the Raiders 28 points to nil. Fifth and last now, Carrigan takes it. 40 out from the Raiders line. Can they get themselves straight back on the attack? Walters to Man. Man puts it high. How's the kick chase? The kick chase is decent. Stewart does well to collect it, but he was outside of the field of play. And this will be a line dropout. For the Raiders, what a start to the second half for the Broncos. They have started the second half very well. Short dropout. It falls for the Broncos. Stags has got it. Takes on Chris. Inside the 10 meter line. Walsh in at first receiver. Terrible pass. Bounces up kindly for Mam. Mam steps back in field. Willison 
Goes close, centimeters close. Walters out to Madden, out the back to Walsh, cut out pass, and slipping is Jesse Arthurs as he takes it. Tackle four, five meters out they are. Walsh in at first receiver again. Carrigan. Nate from We Are Family says, just for the record, penalty count is still 1-0, but yet penalty Bronco. Yeah, 1-0 Broncos, right? So, yes, thank you for proving my point that the Broncos win penalty counts. Oh, the Raiders have spilt it at the back, but so are the Broncos. Double knock on. Oh, no, James is back. And he's back with the joke that cracked me up last time. I'm going to refrain from reading it out so that we don't have a, another experience. Short drop out again here for the Raiders. This one does not go the 10. It doesn't go the 10. Or does it? I'm not reading it, James. I'm not doing it. Around the ground, Super Rugby Pacific force at half time, leading the Crusaders 16 points to five. Oh, my poor Crusaders. What has become of them? Scrum. Oh, scrum down here for the Raiders. Oh, it went the 10, is what happened. It went the 10. Well, Matitzgro says, just saying, when does Walsh leave the ego at home? I really don't know because, I, I, honestly, I would have thought that the way that he almost single-handedly lost the Broncos the grand final last year, it might have toned him down a bit, but apparently not. So I guess the only hope for him is age. I guess when he grows up. So we could be in for a few more years of it. Oh, Jesse Arthurs bobbles the ball. Manages to hold on to it. Here is Walsh now at the other side to Oates. Oates using all that experience just to tighten things up a little bit. Leading 28 nil, they, they don't need to be throwing 15 meter passes across the face of the posts. Carrigan to Mam, out the back to Walsh. Walsh is wrangled in from Morgan Smithies. Gamer Boy 210, ahoy there. Welcome back. Ellis Williams says the Broncos straight up bully in Chevy. It was uh, it was a bit sad to watch. He had a shocker of a first half. Poor old Chevy Chase Stewart. Carrigan is still going. Carrigan beats three tackles and then they've knocked it on the Broncos in the offload. We thought something was on for a moment there. Paddy Carrigan. You thought for all money he was held here, Carrigan. Well, in, in fairness, he surely was held. But they come up with the mistake anyway that balances that out. And it's going to be Raiders with the scrum. 30 out from their own line. They've got to try and come up with something here. Ricky's Green Goblins. Papa Lee, he puts the step on. Big Papa, the Logan boy. They're over halfway on tackle three. Oh, no. Timiko leaves it behind, and the Broncos will get the ball back. I mean, it is, it is 
hammering down rain. Words cannot describe how heavy it is raining there in Brisbane, but uh, there's no excuse for this sort of handling. Do I remember Denny's? Did we have Denny's here in Australia? I remember um, there used to be a big rooster right up the top of my street and that before the whole rebranding and it, it becoming Red Rooster. I don't remember Denny's being in Australia, though. Maybe, maybe we didn't have them here. American table service diner style restaurant chain. I'm not sure that we had one in our area. Yeah, arcade okay, opened in Melbourne. It was owned by Anset. Jeez. Expanded into other states through the 80s. Yeah, I really don't remember. I don't think we had one here. We mustn't have got one here. Because I know the name from movies and stuff. So I know that, it, it, that it's very American. We've got five boroughs these days. Five Burrows is our American restaurant. Cut out pass. Puts Stags into space. Stags dummies. Puts the grubber kick in. Will it sit up for Jesse Arthurs? Arthurs is claiming it. The Raiders have the ball back, but the Broncos are claiming try. It's gone up as a try as well. Jesse Arthurs in the corner. It's gone up as a try. 32 points to nil. Potentially not confirmed yet. Jesse Arthurs might have scored. Well, Jesse Arthurs is telling the most brutal of porkies that you will ever see. Because he hasn't scored it. He hasn't even touched it. Jesse Arthurs, you lying bastard. Trying to claim that try. Yeah, forget about that, mate. Jesse Arthurs telling the porkies. Trying to sell us all on the fact that he scored a try. 28-0 it will remain. Oh, there was a. There used to be a Denny's in Ipswich. Well, there you go. Yeah, we we certainly didn't have one anywhere near where I was living. That's for sure. You think James is telling Porky's if he remembers Denny's? No, because it existed. Are you, are you suggesting that James doesn't remember 82 to 89? Is he that old? She says, oh, God, Michelle, show yourself the door. <laughs> what is this all about? Is he that old? Jesus Christ. Wow. Harsh much. He's lying if he remembers Denny's. <laughs> wow. The nerve, the audacity. Raiders with the ball. Up over halfway on tackle three. They get a six again. Full set of six incoming. Big Papa takes it to ground on tackle one. The 30 out from the Broncos line. Strange with the cutout pass. Hits the chest of Savage, but the Broncos are numbered up. 
Savage runs back in field. Ten minutes gone in the second half. No change to the score. But we saw the first half. Oh, straight through. Some really weak defense. And Simi Sazagi will score for Canberra. Is this the start of a comeback? Could this be the beginning of a comeback for the Raiders? Simi Sazagi. Some really, really weak defense. Oh, just shirt grabbing. Jaden Hunt. Clutching at the jersey. Well, this will be interesting. Can this spark the Raiders into something? A Suncorp miracle, perhaps. 28 points to four, kick to come from right in front. <laughs> oh, bad timing though. Bad timing on the joke. From right in front. Chevy Chase Stewart puts it over. Twenty eight and a half minutes to go. Twenty eight points to six. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was it was horrendous. It was a horrendous moment to pull that one out. Even though, in fairness, he was probably directing at me because I'm the one that he cracked up. Oh, no, he wasn't. He used your name. Yeah. That was a little faux pas. <laughs> the Broncos get us back underway. I thought he was directing at me because it absolutely made me lose my shit earlier. I had to switch the camera off and leave for like five minutes to recover. I had to go and splash water on my face because I'd laugh so hard. Raiders, can they uh, mount the fight back? Offloading back to Croker. Well, who's that was the wrong game. That was the earlier game. That was Denny Levi. The QB there, Goy there. Up over halfway go the Raiders. Could could it be possible? Surely not. Strange puts it high. Walsh moves forward, takes it. Twenty seven minutes left. Plenty of time for a comeback. Can they mount one here, the Raiders? Billy Walters is off. Neil Clarkson with a friendly reminder, don't count your chickens before they hatch. I don't think the Broncos will make that mistake again. Grand final last year, anyone? Chickens were counted that night. Pressure on Chevy Chase Stewart at the back again. There was definitely a little dry humping going on that time. Big defense from the Broncos. Where's my drink? Oh, there it is. Put it on the other side. 26 and a half to go. Oh, that's a high shot there on Schiller. 
The hand went up immediately from the Broncos player. Who was that? The hand went up immediately. Yep, forgive me for that. That was high. Jaden Hunt. Oh, Jaden Hunt's been abysmal. Out of all the Broncos players, Jaden Hunt's been the worst. I would say tonight, in fairness. Well, they've got the ball back. What happened there? The Broncos have come away with it. The Raiders cough it up. And now a penalty. A penalty Broncos. For an illegal steal. The Broncos once more dominating the penalty count as they always do. But I'm all for it tonight. Bring it on, I say. Because I've said Broncos by 30 plus. 24 minutes 50 to go. They're on the attack again. 10 out from the line. Carrigan to Walsh. Out the back to Mam. Numbers to the left here. Corn on the Cobo. Steps in field and scores. And that's a lock for our sports fault. Same game multi. Corn on the Cobo is over. Another one for the Broncos. Thirty-two points to six. Kick to come. Selwyn Corn on the Cobo. A tick off the multi. Oh, the kick didn't find touch. That's how the Broncos got the ball back. Huge mistake there for the Raiders. And that led to that try. A shot for the lock? No, I don't think so. You convinced me into shots for super chats, but you're not gonna. Con you're not talking me into doing shots for free. You convinced me with the shots for super chats. That makes sense. You know, little a little donation, little kickback. I'll do a shot for that. You're not getting me to do shots for free, though. Thirty-two points to six. Conversion to come. Shot for the mama jokes. Okay, as ill-timed as one of them were. Yes. Yes. Well, it wasn't even necessarily ill-timed. It was just ill-directed. But yes, absolutely. 100% on board for that one. I'll totally do that one. 34 points to six for the Broncos tearing the Raiders apart here at Fortress Suncorp. Not a big turnout, but... Not a big turnout, but in fairness, the weather. The weather is atrocious. Twenty two and a half minutes to go. Broncos with a very dominant lead here. And now through the hands they go again. Walsh will dummy and go straight through. Support everywhere for Walsh. Inside to Jaden Hunt. And Jaden Hunt's nightmare of a game continues. Unmarked, under the sticks, he's dropped the ball. Jaden Hunt cannot plausibly hold his spot next week. He can't. 
I mean, he has just been terrible in every single facet of the game. He's been horrible. The Broncos' worst by far, Jaden Hunt. What a let off for the Raiders. There were more points there. Gone absolutely begging. Still 21 minutes to go though. They can still get 50. 50 is still plausible here for the Broncos. I would probably seriously consider taking Jaden Hunt off, though. Jason Roden, thank you very much for the sub. Cheers, mate. They must seriously consider getting Jaden Hunt off the field. I mean, he really has been atrocious. In what's been a quality performance all around from everyone else, he has been the standout. Just 0 out of 10. Terrible conditions for playing, I understand, but everyone else seems to be managing it just fine. So, you've got to balance that out. You've got to weigh it up, don't you? He's been atrocious. Oops. Walsh bobbles it at the back, manages to hold on to it. Uh, Richard Hedder says they left just in case the public transport might not be operating in this kind of weather. Oh, back in the floods, I was caught. I was trapped northside in the, uh, were the floods in 2011? I, one of the floods, one of the big Queensland floods anyway, I got caught north northside because they, that exact reason, public transport ceased. So yeah, you might be right there. <laughs> Richard Etta. Nineteen and a half minutes to go. Broncos leading thirty four points to six. Raiders with the ball up over halfway. Timico's tried hard all night long. Tarpany has been good. Some shiny lights for the Raiders, but yeah, a little bit of a reality check for Ricky's Green Goblins. As Strange puts it high, Walsh is under it, takes it well. He's lined up in the tackle by Sasagi. Eighteen and a half to go. Broncos ball. Carrigan chose the ball, goes on his own up over the 40. Tackle four for the Broncos. Staying on the short side. Ricky up over halfway. Fifth and last. It goes back to Madden. Madden puts it high. Oh, this is a tester. This is a tester. Well taken by Chevy Chase Stewart. That was a great take. The amount of pressure that he's been under all night long, the amount of mistakes that he's made, that was a fantastic take. You've got to applaud the good stuff. And that was an extremely good effort. 17 and a half to go, Raiders ball. Strange puts the step on, runs straight into a brick wall in Jesse Arthur's. Fifth and last on halfway. Back it goes to Levi, puts it high, not a lot of distance. It's going to bounce. Where will it bounce? Kindly for Walsh. Walsh drops it, but then Sebastian Chris drops it as well with the line wide open. Double knock on Raiders ball.
Raiders with a six again. They're on the attack. Ten out from the Broncos line with 16 minutes to go. This would be great for our multi for Chevy Chase to score. Tackle two. They're a meter short. Let's find him. Where's the fullback? He's over here on the right. Tapani goes on his own. Waste of a tackle, that one. Levi, dummies left, goes right. Mariotta takes tackle four. Levi with the grubber kick through. Scooped out of the air by Tyson Smoothie. Beats one, beats two. The inside ball. And Walsh is brought down. 22 out. Great job there, Tyson Smoothie. The Raiders have just got nothing tonight. Which I'm pretty sure I predicted, but uh yeah, we'll We won't uh we won't keep beating everyone over the head with that, will we? The fact that I was right. Broncos with the ball back in. Still 14 minutes 50 to go. Ezra Mam out to Cobo. Cobo to Oates. Oates is in space. Steps back in field. Oates. One to beat. And he's brought down. Ten out from the line. Fifth and last. Cross field kick from Madden. And it's taken well in the end goal from Timiko. No. Savage. Xavier Savage. Seven tackles set here for the Raiders. That was great work, Xavier Savage. Raiders with it now. Up over halfway on tackle two. This is good field position for Ricky's Green Goblins. Very good. Thirteen minutes fifty to go. The game itself beyond them, you would have to think. Some consolation points though. Good for the for and against. Twenty out from the line. The Raiders, they swing it to the right. Timiko puts the step on, can't get the ball free. Fifth and last, ten meters out. Schiller in a dummy half. Now the crossfield kick from Sasagi. It's loose. It falls for the Raiders. And this will be a try for Xavier Savage. It's probably going to go up as no try, though. It'll go up as no try. Okay, it will go up as a try. But we need to look at it. It's not confirmed yet. Neil Clarkson says, think they had a Denny's in South Brisbane. Oh, we're going back to that. We're going all the way back to that conversation. South Brisbane, hey? Well, yeah, it, during that 82 to 89 era, um, I was just born and then seven years old when they closed. So I, I probably, yeah, I probably never would have even seen it. I probably, actually, I probably wasn't even living in Queensland by, the, by that time. Try confirmed, and that's 34 points to 10. And for James, a same-game multi. Savage and Walsh, two-time, anytime try scorer. A uh, two-leg, two anytime try scorer. 34-10, conversion to come. It's a shocker. Dead set shocker. And it remains 34-10. Twelve minutes to go in this game. The comeback's on. Oh, speaking of comebacks, around the grounds with DJ Shaq, the Crusaders coming for the force. 22-15. The force still leading, I'm assuming. Western force still in the lead, I'm gathering. But here come the Crusaders. 59 minutes gone in that contest. Crusaders fighting back. My beloved Crusaders, they're not out of it yet. 
34-10, Raiders with the ball, 11 minutes 45 to go. Looking for a Suncorp miracle here, Ricky's Green Goblins. Sebe Reese is now the Crusaders' all-time try scorer. Oh, wow. I mean, that's, that's pretty impressive because the Crusaders have had some try scoring machines over the years, right? Hamish McKenzie says, so now the rain is going to happen all night. Yes, probably. Strange. Out the back to Stewart. To Chris, looks to pass to an unmarked Savage, but they spill it. And that has summed up the night for the Raiders. Another spilt ball. When you consider, right, DJ Shaq, some of those try scoring machines for the Crusaders is Walsh now with the double pump. Loses the ball in contact. When you consider some of the um, Crusaders players, right? Like um, uh, Marika Vudi Barker was a big try scorer. Um, <laughs> Wilma Titsgro says, who was that player, Rocco, who played for the Crusaders? Uh, you're not talking about Joe Roccothoco, are you? Because he didn't play for the Crusaders. He played for the Blues and the All Blacks. He got picked for the All Blacks, but he played for the Blues. Caleb Relf, of course. Um, Scott Hamilton. <laughs> Sorry, I, 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 do, I do love Scotty Hamilton. He was a really, really underrated player, in my opinion. It's a, He had the misfortune, he being Scott Hamilton... He had the misfortune of just being surrounded by superstars, which is what it was like there at the Crusaders. But um, he was a really solid player, Scotty Hamilton. I feel really bad for him because he really was a quality player. But he just, yeah, he was just surrounded by absolute superstars in every position. Fifth and last here for the Raiders, the absolute worst kick you'll ever see in your life. And the Broncos have it back with nine to play. Richard Hetter says, you know you're all black team players. That's my team, Richard. That's my team. I'm a rugby boy. Through and through. I just happen to call NRL games on YouTube because they get the most numbers for me. I do the rugby as well at certain times. I pick I pick select games that I just refuse to miss. But uh yeah, I'm a I'm a rugby boy through and through. The NRL just happened to get the most views, so I do the most games. Intercepted and the Raiders are away. The cover defense comes across for the Broncos. Ah, oh, Timiko doesn't have the pace. I can't believe it. Okay, Timiko can't run in the wet, but still, numbers to burn out to the left here for the Raiders. Strange puts the kick in. Why would you do that? That was a strange decision. Oh, the blown that the Raiders why would you put the kick in there was a 43 on one overlap to the left and Ethan Strange puts the kick in oh wow Gerard Susu says who's your supreme rugby team Dan okay am I, am I gonna pick players in position is that the idea because um We'll, we'll, we'll pick the spine. I think the spine's very easy to pick. What? You're not used to exaggeration on this channel yet, James? Or <laughs> The Cuban egg is like, wait! Wait! Your name's Dan? Yes. Nice to meet you.
Six minutes, 40 to go. The Raiders have the ball. Jasper Tenney says up the mighty Broncos. Suncorp belongs to Broncos. As opposed to... Who? The Dolphins. <laughs> I thought you'd be used to my extreme exaggerations by now, James. After all this time. Whoops. Completely missed my mouth. Spillage. Richard Hedder says, Waikato Chiefs and the Queensland Reds from New Zealand have been living in Australia, dream in Queensland. Yeah, well, a kind, kind of similar story, Richard. Um, Australian born, Australian raised, born in New South Wales, live in Queensland, but um, uh, Maori and Irish heritage. So I spent a lot of time with... I spent a lot of time when I was little growing up, spent a lot of time with the Kiwi side of my family. So I got into rugby union, got into the All Blacks, got into um, even the cricket. I would go for New Zealand when they played Australia. Um, but uh, but I'm, I'm like for the old Panther, for the old Panthers side of the family, Penrith Panthers, Camden boy, Oh, and, and this time it's intercepted by Schiller, a much faster player. Reese Walsh is c tracking across. Schiller bumps him off like he's not even there. But it did enough to give the Broncos support players time to get there and shut that play down. This time they must surely score the Raiders. No kicks. No kicks this time through the hands, but it's a shocker of a pass. They get the offload. The Raiders looking for some consolation points. They're right in front of the post. Five out. Tackle three. Yeah, catch you later, Michelle. Enjoy the gay FL, right? Sorry. You can't make gay jokes in 2024. Now you say gay FL and people will be like, and what's wrong with that? Well, there's nothing wrong with that side of it, but <laughs> cheers to cancellation. Yeah. Well, what is it? Paul Heyman says, cancel me a hundred times. I'll come back a hundred and one times. Especially since the AFL hits harder. Out. Out right now. AFL hits harder. Ah, oh, mind you, it is a girl saying that, so that's, yeah. Take that for what it's worth. Okay, I'm definitely getting myself cancelled. Ah, uh, I'm fighting for that cancellation. <laughs> Tackle three here for the Raiders. Three minutes left. 10 out from the line. They spread it right. Oh, no, they don't. They lose it. And Corn on the Cobo picks it up. The Broncos have definitely shut up shop. Oh, Corn on the Cob. He's hurt his shoulder. Richard Hetta says, is Michelle a girl or a man? Just asking in a good way. <laughs> asking in a 2024 way. Madden puts the step on, links up with Heatherington. Broncos back on the attack. I think that <laughs> both says James. <laughs> <laughs> fifth and last Broncos 20 out from the line man puts the grubber kick in it's collected at the back by Chevy Chase Stewart
Minute 46 to go. Whoopsie. <laughs> Knocked my glass over. Oh, straight through a big gap. Go the Raiders. Support from Schiller outside. The Broncos are there in cover. Fifth and last, Raiders. One minute, six to go. Through the hands they go. Out to the left. Keeping the ball alive. Back in midfield. Nothing doing here for the Raiders. Starley to Tuppany. Tuppany fires it out the back and it's lost forward. Broncos ball. Inside the last minute, both teams have... have who's got a penalty? No one. Time's off. They're reviewing something. Who captains challenged that and why? Raiders, of course they did. Why? What's the point? Who cares? Who honestly cares at this point? The Raiders with the captain's challenge for some reason. I mean, it was a pretty clear knock on, I thought. They're... <laughs> Good Lord. This is my problem with the captain's challenge, all right? It's there so that you can challenge a call, an absolute howler. What I hate is seeing teams go, oh, well, we may as well. We may as well use it. Time's up on the clock. 30 seconds left. That was clearly a knock-on. Um, it's just a waste of time for everybody. That's my only problem with it. And there's, there's no way to, to stop that from happening. There's no way to stop it at all. But that, is, that was just ridiculous. I mean, it's the, it's the honor system. It's the honor system, basically. The Raiders should not have even challenged that. But anyway, the Broncos, for the first time this season, I believe have uh, found themselves inside the top eight. So there you go. The Broncos, with this win, have found their way into the top eight for the first time this season. A 34 points to 10 victory. Who are the Broncos playing next week? Because I would just like to really know that I can go back to hating them next week. It'd be great. How are the Sharks fourth? Well, they were first going into this weekend. Um, they've had the bye. That's helped. But also, they've won matches as opposed to your team, James, who haven't. You know, winning matches kind of helps keep you up there. Hey, you started it. I'm getting in before you even answer. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so who are the Broncos got next week so that I can go back to hating them, please? Oh, the Tigers. Yeah, perfect. The Tigers at Campbelltown. All right, sweet. I can go back to hating the Brisbane Broncos next week. Go, Tigers. Go for the upset. Thirty-four points to ten here. The Broncos have done the job on Ricky's Green Goblins, and I'm serious. I've been calling it. The Raiders are about to go on a, a six or seven match losing streak. They really are, because they've had an easy draw thus far. They've come up to some proper competition tonight. They got belted. They're in for about six or seven weeks of beltings. 34-10 here. Coming up tomorrow on the Waste of Water Sports, we've got the Generations Vodcast with the old Panther as a lead-in to the doubleheader. I think it's a doubleheader, yes? Two games tomorrow. 
the yeah, two o'clock Bulldogs versus Knights. Four o'clock Sharks versus Cowboys. Cowboys are a bit of a, a bogey team for the Sharks, so that'll be an interesting one to keep an eye on. And the Rabbitohs with the bye, but they'll probably lose that even. <sighs> All right, Waste of Water Sports. Thank you so much for your company. As always, uh, I won't do too much of a post game tonight because uh, I've got to get ready for tomorrow. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, that's not the reason. It's not like I'm going to start setting up now or anything. But uh, there won't be much of a post game tonight because, uh, well, a I can smell food. There's food wafting in from out there, and. Um, yeah, we'll do a big one tomorrow. I'm on holidays. What's for dinner? Hang on. What? Roast beef and rice. And leftover red rooster. Yes. <laughs> All right, Waste of Water Sports, thank you so much for your company as always. Very much appreciated. We'll catch you tomorrow. Two games coming up. And, of course, the Generations vodcast with the old Panther. We can find out how his night out was. The old Panther was in at Suncorp Stadium tonight for that game. So we'll find out. Um, my go Hang on. My go-to Chinese order. Oh, okay. It's quite big. Um, oh, and it changes from time to time as well. Okay, so always... Always with the honey chicken. Honey chicken is a given. That always happens. Sometimes sweet and sour pork, sometimes sweet and sour chicken. Depends really how I'm feeling. If I'm if I'm really in a chicken mood, I'll do the two chicken orders, right? But um uh Mongolian beef sometimes as well. Always the special fried rice because I like my little prawns in the in the fried rice. So I always order the special fried rice. And yeah, like sides depend. Yeah. You're not Aussie if you don't get honey chicken. Absolutely. 100%. All right, Waste of Water Sports. Thank you so much. I really am going to head off quickly tonight. But uh, big stream tomorrow. Yes. Generations Vodcast with the Old Panther. Two games. Bulldogs, Knights, Sharks, Cowboy. Thank you so much. I'll catch you then. Cheers. Or on Discord. For those of you who are on Discord later, I mean, I'll still be up. I've got work to do. So I'll, uh, I'll still be up and about. Spring rolls, absolutely. Yes. Spring rolls and... Um, ooh. Oh. What's the name? The name escapes me because I'm having... I'm having mental blanks tonight. Um, oh. All right, hang on. Before I go, I've got to look this up or it's going to drive me crazy. Uh, the, uh, yeah. <clears throat> um. Ugh. The name escapes me. Money bag, yeah, the money bags too. I do like the money bags. It's, it's not what I'm thinking of. It's it's like such an obvious thing. It's it's so stupid that I've I've gotten. I'm actually going. This is hilarious. I'm actually going into Uber Eats to find my previous orders so that I can tell you. Well, we get the prawn chips for free. The 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 local the local restaurant. You get the prawn crackers for free if you order over a certain amount. So we always get those anyway. So I, I don't even have to remember them. They're just always there. And then what happens is I, I load up on them. As soon as they arrive, I'm just like, yes. And then I, I load up on those bastards. Um, uh, here we go. Entree. Well, it just it says on this menu barbecue buns, but um, I don't know. I think there's always a uh, 
Yeah. Barbecue, but the barbecue pork buns. I felt like there was a special name for them. Not just barbecue buns. Barbecue pork buns. But I always order those. Oh, sesame prawn toast. Stop it. Ah, oh, all right. I'm, I'm going. Waste to World of Sports. Thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow. Generations Vodcast. Bulldogs vs. Knights. Sharks, Cowboys. Coming up. Catch you later. Before I go crazy and order Uber Eats Chinese. Because I will. I would. I so would. The bandana's off. The hunger sweats are out. It's all, it's all happening. Wasted world of sports, eh? Oh, he's copped a head right to the nuts. Tedesco's butt crack. Ahoy! He's nearly taken security's head off. I have no idea what the wasted world of sports.